Get me Brackage. Instagram. Discord. Wes Anderson sucks. Wes Anderson. Spike Jones sucks, man. What, no Q&A? Josh Asapke. M. Night Shalaman. But it's time to admit you are a fan of the Iron Pack. These guys are liberal filmmakers. They cannot be trusted. We are watching Mean Girls. We got Ion Pack. We got that uh, Tony Hawk is in the house. If your agent calls me in any way whatsoever, you're fired from the film. I always wear this bucket hat when I'm directing. Left-wing politics. This is a film. I was right. obsessed with trash. The movie's trash, you know? Gritty New York City, and you'll never make it in this business. Never make a movie. Why do we have to see his that- fucking name in the movie? I- I'm crazy about sound. Podcast. You don't see a film and say, Joe Schmo did the fucking food. I don't make movies, I make films. I grow mentally ill. He hasn't made a fucking good film in 25 years. Rub Vaseline on the lens. Bro, Packer. Reduced black ratio. Doritos bags look mad different. You are a creative. We get it. Make out with girls. Let the creative people talk to the money people. As a filmmaker, he is nothing. A zero. He's a, a pig piece of shit. There's a whole group of guys who pretend to be making special films. I'm my fucking line producer, trust fund. Let the creative people talk to the money people. We love the Ion Pack. Very creative what you do. Hey. All right, yo, what the fuck is really good, everybody? We're here with Matty <sighs> Keeley. Let's get the fuck into it. King of the 1975. He's back in New York. He just landed. Long time coming. Got the elf bar. <laughs> <laughs> got, the, got the fucking recess. Got we just the had recess. steaks on Ludlow. Yes, we We've did. Been potting for four hours in real life, but now he's here on the couch. <laughs> we finally made. What time is it? It's four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> if you can believe it. Feels it. like it. <laughs> wow, it's good to be here. How's Cheers, it feel guys. to be back in New York? Well, we have the show coming. Last time I was in New York, I was just like. Kicking it with with you guys, I was kind clan. of like, kind of hanging out. But um, yeah, no, it's good. I gotta go to Pennsylvania tomorrow, and I gotta make this show work because we have like our MSG thing. Yeah. But um, I love New York, man. But it kind of burns me out pretty quickly. It's like I have a weird relationship with New York. Do you sp- have you spent much time in London? I have actually I've only been twice. Yeah. yeah. The, the pound scared me off at the time because <laughs> it was everything was double as expensive, and I was like going to like Riding House Cafe or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I can't. I have to leave tonight. Cool. I went to I went to Fabric a bunch. You went to cool. Fabric. Yeah. That's quite fun. Mm. I mean, I kind of have like a bit more space out there, but I keep talking to you. Like, I want. I kind of want to just get like a place out here because you, like, you got to do it. Well, it's like I like this. I like the kind of scene. Like I don't really have a scene in in London, and um, like I've got I've got mates out here, and it feels like there's this like it was the thing that we talk about all the time. Right? Yeah. It's like kind of the internet became like four websites, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And that's where like sh- shit is. That's where like art is. It's where everything is. So, like. In the early days when we were coming up Mm -hmm. and there was like all this like subversive shit on the internet, like places to find music or like see like, I don't know, dead bodies, but like (laughs) rotten.com. Oh yeah. Lemon party. Lemon party. (laughs) Shout out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, big shout out to Lemon Party. (laughs) But (laughs) but um even outside of like the pre Mimi kind of stuff, there was like well, 
you see it in like our favorite movie, you know, like we live in public, like that kind of like utopianism of like the internet and like the possibilities mm, yeah. of it. And like, so w- the, the, the type of punk that you'd expect uh, within that, like we kind of like lived through and now the internet feels like it's kind of quite like sterile environment where, yeah. you know, it had, you know, it's kind of boring. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's why I'm kind of attracted to like, that's why I became a fan of your guys pod. And then when I started hanging out over here, you know, it's like, it's interesting because it feels like, even if it's like on like Patreon or Substack and something like that, it feels like there's something like genuinely kind of subvert. Well, I don't want to say subversive, but like something that's like not sanctioned or like kind yeah. of like totally sanitized. You mm, know what I mean? Yeah. And it's quite nice where like people are just like talking and it has its own audience and it has its own life. Do you know what I mean? That's what, um, because that's what creates like good art, doesn't it? Like the what do they say? The the seniors of an the environment. Seniors, yeah. like exactly. One one person needs to rise from that. The dare is interesting. We were talking about mm-hmm. in in regards to the Dime Square thing. Big shouts to Harrison. Because the Dime Square thing has like been lacking in music. Yeah, which New York never has. Exactly. Yeah. As, uh, I was it's coming say, though. It's, it's coming. really it it. It feels like music is back. That was a huge, that was a critique when people were uh, in the Dime Square Twitter discourse. I saw that one that really hit a while ago was the the real problem with the Dime Square scene is that there's no Where music. is the art? Yeah. Uh, Brad Trammell said it straight to our face. He yeah. said, but where yeah. is the art, guys? Yeah. We were like, it's but coming, it's, Brad. It's coming. <laughs> it, I, I think it was like this COVID thing. Everyone was living online too much. We started a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's really, it's really coming back. Music feels in New York feels good right now. So Tramel said that to you guys. Tramel yeah. said that. I mean, it lit the fire under my ass too. I mean, exactly. like we were Tramel's more. Tramel's lit the fire under so many people. Like, as like, he under, should. Like under me, like massively. Yeah. yeah. And not enough. I've been doing a bunch of interviews. You know, you like your, fucking what you know you do. You like your Guardians and your New York mm-hmm. Times and stuff like that. I've told them. I'm using like I'm essentially paraphrasing like Brad Trammell here. Like yeah. you need to, <laughs> you need to put that. I'm in using the, the language. Of yeah, I'm using the language. I'm using Trammellian language. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, like seriously. No, I'm not joking. Yeah, like, I know. The I'm, guy yeah. is fucking goated. Like we love him, right? Like we yeah. love him. And um, and this is the thing. It's an interesting thing with Trammell because like, if you're talking about like art, like I'm like a writer, right? Yeah. So. That's what I do. And I suppose like what I'm good at is like, um, I don't know, like presenting like ideas. Let's say that's what it is in my lyrics. But I'm not like the sometimes the best person to even articulate them. Like fans or friends will come over to me and like articulate like my work like better than like I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is that Tramel has this ability to do. It's like. He just has the ability to kind. Of, he just has a really strong cultural awareness, right? And mm-hmm. he kind of like gets art from the inside and the outside. He gets it as an artist and as a, uh, and as a kind of consumer of art. And when you're making art, having somebody who's like that, on it, yeah, you know, putting that stuff out there is really really interesting. Now he doesn't quite have the audience that I think he deserves. Oh, totally. But you know. Most people, most like dope people don't. So, yeah. Well, that was something. So last night we went to see Vincent Gallo talk. Biggest of shouts. Big shout. Which we signed yeah. an NDA that we would not talk about it. Well, we said we we you couldn't record. I don't know if it said we can't talk about it. I'm pretty sure that's what it said. Really? Can I not talk? about No, it? we should talk about it. You have to talk about <laughs> it. We'll talk. Yeah. We'll talk. No, yeah. because that's the whole thing. We were talking about this before. Gallo has blurred the lines to the point like he's made movies post Bad Bunny. Yeah. And they're not out there. Now, is the not out there the mo- the art? Like, yeah, that's what is. we were saying. Because I was, uh, I was saying, for listeners, I was saying, you know, there is some kind of responsibility, not just to your audience in like a fan way, but there's responsibility to the kind of canon of the history of art right. to have it have a life. It's, right. it's like to contribute to like a evolving history of art. 
But you were saying, well, what if the him not releasing it and having this kind of it existing, him having this philosophy of why it can't be on the world, that is his contribution to the canon. So mm-hmm. it actually is more responsible to the canon of art than even if he had released it's the it. The art of it, his persona. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Which is he is he is his art. Yeah, exactly. Which I think is a difficult place. I would find that difficult to get to as an artist because totally. I think there's an element of like well, there's an element of pretense there that I kind of don't really step into. Like, I like to kind of... It's funny of me to say, because a lot of people call me very pretentious. But, like, (laughs) I do kind of try and, like, take the wizard robes off a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Like, I like kind of... I don't... I'm not as... I'm not as... Don't see myself or, like, to present myself as a high artist. I like to debase that sometimes. Yeah. But the thing is with, like... Yeah, with, like, Gallo now, like what what is it like we're talking about it do you know what i mean you went to a talk where you couldn't have a yeah. phone you signed an nda <laughs> yeah. like, well you know we've had excited conversations like as young people like talking about it, like maybe that's what it is now like you know he um he's kind of he's a really really interesting artist in in that respect but it does challenge the idea of if an idea is not being met yeah. by an audience, yeah. if it's yeah. not being communicated, is it an idea? Yeah. Like, does art actually exist if it's not? If you say you've met, yeah, it's complete. You know, if you yeah. haven't given birth to something, is anybody seeing the baby? Right. Exactly. Well, it, cause it, because it also it also allows you like I suppose okay, he made like Buffalo, fair enough. So like he yeah. he has that he pass, goated, right? Yeah. yeah. But like people who haven't made like goated shit. Exactly. It's like it becomes an excuse. Like you can make something that is so impenetrable or go even further that doesn't physically exist. Yeah. yeah. If it's so impenetrable, like it can't really be criticized. Like yeah. you're not really taking a risk. And that's kind of what like making art. Yeah. Exactly. Well, like, no, that's what putting art out is about. Right. You know what I mean? Al- opening yourself up to that critique and kind of like allowing that to be part of it. Um. But um, so, how much can you talk about that? I don't know. I didn't actually read the NDA. I, just thought, <laughs> I, I, I thought it just it meant either. like this is like you can't record it. I didn't. Right. I don't know if you're not allowed to talk. But about they made it. sure we didn't record it by not taking our phones in. Yeah, but I don't know. Whatever. We take risks. His here. justifications yeah. for not putting those movies out did kind of fuck me up. Like, Same. and I, because yeah. I, I believed what he was yeah. saying, and I believed in his his desire to not be recorded. Like we've asked him to be on this pod, you know plenty of times and (laughs) last night i was like i don't know if i want to ask him again because he genuinely has like an artistic belief that a recording of him speaking his ideas takes away some freedom from him or something yeah i mean i i don't doubt his sincerity as an artist i just wonder how much of it is a construct you know what i mean like um, yeah no it's true that's why when people are always coming you know kj has an unreleased movie i have an unreleased album everyone's like you guys say all your shit but like put your money where your mouth is i don't have a counter argument i'm like you know what you're right no they're right generally well i mean that's what we spoke about before as well is that like you guys are kind of this is born out of being like for this happened when like covid did you start yeah Yeah. it's like (coughs) it's like frustrated artists during covid Mm -hmm. and it had a vibe and you have like like you've spoken before. You have like cold pods, and you have like hot pods. And it <laughs> happened to be like a hot pod, right? <laughs> we don't Stephen know how. Stephen Curry might have a pod, but I bet it's cold. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, they, right. People, there's you so there's pods. so many it's cold pods. It's incredible. From people is who there, are, who's the most? Who's the one that's like you'd think would be hot, but is cold? I hate to say it, but like actual famous people have cold pods. Yeah, there's it's like really a, wild. There's like a Brie Larson pod. Wow. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, you know what I mean. What's going on? There's been plenty there. of times where I'm like, oh, what's up with? XYZ artist who I used to see all the time who's kind of disappeared and I look it up and I'm like, oh, they have a cold pod. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Big fucking surprise there. <laughs> Podcasting is the new being in a band, right? Yeah, exactly. It is. Exactly. You said that, though. Yeah. I don't want to steal say that? your quote. He did yeah. say that. You did. It's a good... We are in a band together. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it, it's... Uh, th- I think that what we've spoken about before is that, like... I think that... Talking about culture is fine, mm-hmm. but making culture is what you want to be doing. Exactly. Right? And I think that, like Tramel says, like, he's right. Like, everyone's got to put their money where their mouth is. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that, like, the thing, but the thing is that I liked about 
about that that drew me to you guys and then I think why we became friends is because that's always been quite obvious in this pod that there's like a sense of optimism. It's not mm. like a jaded thing where yeah. you're like, fuck this and this shit sucks and like, you know, I'm getting older and whatever. Yeah. It's like, where's the shit? Yeah. yeah. Like, where's the good shit? Yeah, we like, want to find is it. it? Like, yeah. I want to find it and w- can we be part of it? Should we be part of it? Yeah, Let's yeah, talk yeah. about like what yeah. we can do. Um, you know, so, and that's what, that, and kind of that's that's what it's about. And um, I think that it's really cool that that this is like part of your broader artistic like statement. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. It's, it's like most people like, okay, here's my hot take like post doing like loads, <laughs> Let's do of, it. loads of like <laughs> fucking interviews and shit like yeah. that, right? Is that you... As an artist, like when you put a record out, like reviews are like a thing, mm-hmm. right? And like, you know, like you do interviews with like journalists and shit yeah. like that. Now, I wanted to do this partially because of like our friendship, but also because like, I'm a fan of this and I enjoy this. So there's some things that I'm doing that's just like for me. Yeah. There's some things that you do that you do, right? Now, music journalism is one of those things where it's like, now I don't want to like, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to shit on like music journalists, right? Oh please, <laughs> <laughs> we but shit the, on film but, criticism all but day. All the good music journalists that I really love, like Joe, the New York Times, or like Laura Snapes, or Michael Hahn, all these people, they're kind of writers that yeah, like, yeah. want to write books. Exactly, and end up do wanting to write writing books if they're good enough, right? Because mm-hmm. the truth is, right. There's no famous music review. Yeah. Facts. There isn't one. No. There's famous pieces of critique. You know, you've got like yeah. guy, you've got like Frank Sinatra's got a cold, or like you've got like famous pieces of Or Mark Fisher on Burial. Yeah, yeah. Mark yeah. Fisher on Burial, you have like famous things that come through, but they're not p- more reviews. They're more kind of like, you know, exactly. like philosophies almost. Yeah, and and it and it there is a sense of like the personal relationship the writer has with exactly. The, yeah. But the thing is with music journalism is that even with the internet, is that music journalism is a service. Right. Like when you had like linear streams of media, like you would buy a, I don't know, like a newspaper or a music magazine and the reviews would be like adverts. It'd be like, what are you going to spend your record money on? Mm. Like, and you'd yeah. read the reviews and you judge it based on that. Now, by the time you have to read the review, you've already got time to listen to the music and make yeah. your own mind up. So yeah, it's kind yeah, of yeah. like it becomes just an exercise for writers to write, yeah. which is fine. Yeah. But if you're a writer and that's your art mm. and that exists purely based on somebody else's art that people right. care more about, eventually you don't want to be that. Yeah. You know, sure. unless you're like the most famous music journalist ever that yeah. I can't name. Who is that? I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah. like, and I'm not, I, this is a thing. This is yeah. not me being like a resentful, like, because we've always had great kind of, kind of good reviews or like mixed reviews. I, I'm not a jaded artist, but it doesn't, music and like the, the critique and music and film is like very, very different. Like, um, so there's that. So it's kind of like there's no famous music reviews. So yeah. you don't really need to worry about that because yeah. like like it'll it'll have a life of its own. You, I don't know if I told you this story, which is a different tangent, but like like what has been weird for me recently is watching like like we love like film, right? And film and TV. Let's I'd say TV's in its like golden age. Yeah, right that's now, exactly right. Yeah, music's not no. Mm-hmm. Film is weird, p- weird, but pretty great a lot of the time. A lot was, of good movies. Yeah. And um, I was thinking about this. I was like talking to the, I had like, I was sat next to some like 13 year old kid. He's like the son of some like music guy. And I was just like talking to him. I was like, hey, what, so what kind of like music do you like? And he was like, I don't know. And I was like, well, what like, um, what artists do you listen to? And he was like, I don't know. I was like, all right, well, what's, what songs do you like? And he said, he said, what, full songs? Whoa. Wow. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. That's the the TikTok shit. Well, yeah, essentially that TikTok shit. But like, I didn't realize that the form 
yeah. that I yeah. recognize as being the smallest denomination. Yeah, but like, yeah, like yeah, the yeah, song, yeah. it doesn't get like yeah, smaller than smaller song. than the song. Yeah. You got the album, you got the whole thing. I was like, whoa, okay. Now, and then I started thinking, like, well, it's interesting with music because that isn't happening in film and TV. We either want like content to be six seconds long or six months long. Yeah. yeah we right. want like the longest story that has like Dostoevsky level narratives exactly. and 50 different characters. Yeah, yeah. We want the Sopranos every week. Mm. But then we all we want it to be like six minutes. Yeah. If somebody says to you, can I show you a video? And you say, yeah. And they pull up YouTube and it says nine minutes. It's over. Yeah. That feeling is just the worst feeling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do. I can't. Bro. Yeah. I know. Can't Wait, no, but it's good. It. Yeah. It's at four minutes. And it's like stand up or something. <laughs> and like, I, can't, I can't do this. <laughs> but it made me think like, well, maybe like, say you have like Instagram influencers, right? Yeah. Some like young girl who's cute who is not even like sexualizes herself, but some like young, cute girl and she gets a bunch of Instagram followers. I've noticed quite a natural, con a natural step is like they get a ukulele or they get a guitar. Yeah. And th there becomes a, uh, uh, what's it called? Like a SoundCloud link. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, listen to my music, buy my music. Yeah. It's never read my screenplay. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it feels like the what people have seen is this almost like shortcut to like like mu doing music is kind of easy if you're cute enough almost right. not just with girls but with like dudes as well. Whereas like there's no kind of like social media shortcuts to like being a dop. Yeah. yeah. Or like writing, being a great screenwriter. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is why I think we're in this kind of weird place yeah. where like there's still great music, but there's just a lot of dross and like Well, yeah, it's it's so weird because it became this thing where if you told musicians from any other era, what if you didn't even need a label? You could sit in your bed and press a button and everything you've recorded, which you could do in your house by yourself, was just available for everyone in the world to see. They would have said, Oh, that sounds like a utopia that will never happen. And that it's exactly what happened, but it somehow has become, it just became like worse because it over accessibility, kind of oversaturation, it cheapened like being able to make money off of it. It just actually, it's weird. The increased accessibility actually got bad. Well, Tramel, let's bring it back yeah, to Tramel. Yeah. Yeah. Tramel Always. talks about that idea of how like, <laughs> what does he say? He was saying that like, it, well, no, it's kind of that. It's kind of a Mark Fisher idea, isn't it? Where he he says that like the idea we all kind of buy, just assume or buy into this idea that young people are at the forefront of cultural change, right? Mm. And that's always been the case through the twentieth century. But it's also because like the economy has allowed that to happen. You know, where are we? Like you, in the nineties, you could be a middling musician mm -hmm. afford to live around here yeah, work exactly. in like a coffee shop do you know what i mean there would be parties not every single space was sanctioned between like you know like essentially the cops and the real estate industry yeah, like there was yeah. places you could go party there was places where things were happening but now young people don't have those environments they don't have any money and they're forced to kind of make the most homogenous. They're, they're like making the, what does he say? Like the flat design for the yeah, internet yeah, yeah. startup. Yeah. Do you know well, what I mean? Because they also have to sell themselves in a way they didn't have to before. Well, let's get the bag. We, we grew yeah. up, you can't sell out. Yeah. yeah. So when we were growing up, the one thing you didn't do was sell out. Mm. And generationally, they had to morph that into get the bag because capitalist capital. It sound like a sixth form. Man. Look out! <laughs> 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 Just the way that the world is now doesn't allow them to do that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it's kind of like it's difficult, and also like I'm in a band, so like 
I can't really relate to this individualization of subculture because like all subculture has become like individualized, right? It's yeah. Like, you used to gr- you used to dress like groups of people, like scenes of people. Yeah. Now kids dress like individuals. Like the incentive to create to like unite and then be bigger than something yeah the idea of the individual like you know the strokes are the last people to change how people dressed yeah and me and kj still do it yeah you know so it's like (laughs) it's it's kind of like it's that idea isn't being sold to people because to be like a goth when i was growing up you had to find out where the goths hung out in your city you could talk to them yeah find out what shows they went to yeah read the books they read watch the movies and you immersed yourself in a subculture and you became that thing yeah it doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, but maybe that's just like kind of getting old and maybe there's loads of shit going on that I just But it's but it's, it's because it's hyper it's hyper competitive. I mean, labels used to invest in like kind of raw potential. Now you have to have your own brand that has shown some kind of at least on the internet success before Well, that's an interesting thing though, because I've thought about this as somebody who runs a label, mm. right? Because I try and put myself in the shoes of like a 17 year old kid because when I was growing up, I was, you thought you need a label, right? So you get really, really good and you impress the label and then you put music out. Whereas now you just fuck, you just put music out. Like that's what you're, you're kind of doing. So when I'm like looking at a young artist or something, or traditionally you'd think don't have anything out. So when you come out, it like explodes. Yeah. Right. But then I think if I was 17 Mm -hmm. and I had the ability to like put music out yeah, and I hadn't done it. Yeah. How much would I want it? Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, I wouldn't have been able to, I I didn't, I couldn't get arrested. I had to start my own label at 21 after every label came and literally went, nope, too weird. We want an indie band. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, if I had the ability outside of my space, which we did put our music on and stuff mm. like that, if we had the ability to like put stuff on Spotify and hope that it catches an algorithm or something like that, we, the, the 17 year old me would have done that. Right. So it's only kind of with the professional hindsight that I could say, Oh, you know, don't do this or don't do that. But I also don't really believe in that. Cause I think that like now discovery, as much as it was when we loved alternative music right so discovery was always part of our experience mm-hmm. like when you first heard forte on like 120 minutes or something like yeah, that yeah. you had to be up at two o'clock in the morning and be a weird kid yeah so you had that solidarity with those people right mm-hmm. now you know it's like i you know i look after like an artist like biba doobie like one of the main reasons biba doobie is enormous is because the lion's share of her fans have been there from the beginning. Yeah. And that's why she's big. Yeah. The NME didn't go, this is your new favorite artist. Here's one song. We're the gatekeepers of culture. Listen to us. Right. Kids were like, no, nah, we've made the decision. We fuck with her. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I yeah. think that discovery is a massive part of the experience of like, yeah. you're having a relationship with an artist now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 No, I know of, I won't name names, but I know of, more than one person who passed on Lil Peep because they were like, oh yeah, what is this? Well, Small labels. And then obviously it was, it was that they just, it happened organically online and everybody was like kicking themselves. It was the same thing with the 75. Like we couldn't, we weren't, we had this whole thing of like, I was trying to say, cause, cause when people, uh, when people came to, to like our studio, like we played them, if you know the 75, like Sex, Chocolate, The City, like all these like early songs. Yeah. They were all there. Yeah. But it didn't sound like didn't sound like uh, the bands that were getting signed at the time, these kind of yeah, like yeah, post yeah. Libertines, Arctic Monkeys right. kind of bands, where they were getting like huge deals on regular regular labels. And I was, you know, we're in touch with culture. We like being on the ground level. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. I was like that at 17. I was a spec. I was like a nerdy kid. Yeah. And I was saying all these like lofty things, like the band didn't dress indie. We played like weird instruments, like, you know, like, and I was like, we create in the way we consume. And that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, like nobody listens to a genre of music anymore. Like, right. That's an old yeah, thing. Yeah, like, totally. So, nobody's going to be incentivized to create a genre of music at any point. And if they are, it's going to feel 
retrospective because yeah. the internet is just opening up. Yeah. Right, it's it's just opening everything up. It's it opened up gender, it opened up style, it opened up aesthetic, it opened up everything, and um, everything became a conversation. Do you know what I mean? As opposed to anybody telling anybody what everything was. Yeah. Um. So we were always like that. We were always saying that's what we're gonna do, and then, like I said, we couldn't get signed. So then we set up our own label, like maybe naively. But only just because like us and our manager believed in ourselves and then Zane Lowe started smashing our record and and that was it. Yeah. And all the major labels came back and they were like, yo, what's up? And we were like, <laughs> yo. <laughs> we were like, yo, what's up? How are you guys doing? <laughs> and, then, and we kind of managed to be like, well, you know, it's happening now and you can't get into our show at Reading Festival and all this stuff. So it was like, you know, I think the really lofty, pretentious thing I said at the age of like 23 <laughs> to a bunch of regular people was like, it's my car, but you can get in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of what happened. Like, you know, like we never, I've never had a dude in a jacket or any, there's never been a person involved in 75 that isn't me, Jamie, Patty, um, the Ed, you know, like our team. So um, it worked out well in the end, but... And that's a powerful position to be in. Yeah, that's like I mean, pretty I much like the best origin that story. That is the ideal in yeah, a way. Yeah, it is. It is, but it only... But it's like... It is, but it was born out of... Like, it was born out of strife. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. Frustration, a lot of things, yeah. Like it didn't I mean? feel good at the time. No, it didn't feel good at the time. But the nice thing about it is that it didn't come with any kind of like vitriol. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. redemption. Yeah. Right. Like I didn't... like I, I genuinely... I almost like empathized with these pe these people. I was like, <laughs> before the word boomer existed, I yeah. was like, these guys are just, they don't get it. Like, yeah, if yeah. I keep, and I had this like whole album in my first, regardless of whether you liked 75 or whatever, like loads of people do. And I had like that whole album in my head. I was like, I just, I just need to yeah. fucking just do this. Just trust me. Like people will like it. This sect of people will like it. And, um, that was also, so yeah, so like, yeah, like owning our own label and like, and you know, and since then we've done the Japanese house, Wolf Alice, like Biba Doobie, Rina Sawayama, like, like we've become like a, a proper label, you know? Yeah. But, but the reason that the label works is because we just want it to be factory that worked. Yeah. 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 You yeah, know? yeah. We don't, we don't have like a boardroom or a way of doing things with our artists. We basically fall in love with an artist like gawp at them mm. and then go, what do you want to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? I'll, I'll pay, I'll pay. Like, what do you want to do? You want to do that? Yeah. So it's like, <coughs> we sign stuff that we love and that we believe in and then it just does its own thing because it is an artist. I think if you start getting into the, the way of trying to create artistry, do you yeah. know what I mean? You get like, well, sometimes it does work. You know, some of the biggest artists in the world right now are, but you're having a marketing meeting rather than like a an art meeting. But the thing is, it's like, yeah, and and I think that that's where I don't really, I I can't really understand the whole like the um. Not that I can't understand it is that you know like oh I get cancelled all the time, but I don't really. Yeah. Because like, I'm not homophobic. I'm not racist. I'm not done yeah. a sex attack. Yeah. Like, I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not, I, have, I don't actually get cancelled. I just like sometimes say something that isn't like, isn't everything great and everyone nice? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. So it's not that. It's just, so what I don't empathize that much with is like PR teams. I don't see the point when the veil now is so thin between fa like. It's gone. At, dude, after rave, like you used to have like, David Bowie and the audience. Yeah. And the audience were like, they might as well have been looking at Bowie like that. And he's down there. And same with Michael Jackson, all that kind of shit. Rave happened and it w became way more democratic. It went like that. Yeah. And it was like, actually, the audience are just as important. This is David Bowie was saying this. Actually, the audience are just as, um, are just as, do I need to, am I good? So we're having tech problems. <laughs> but I'm just saying that back in the day, there was this huge, like, pantheonized, the, the, like, there was pantheons of culture, right? Yeah, yeah. So you had pantheons of culture back in the day that were, um, that were on this massive pedestal, and you'd have people looking up at Bowie, looking up at Michael Jackson, 
looking up at all those kind of people. And then when rave music happened, it became way more democratic and it was like, nah, the audience and the performer are just as much a part of that kind of thing. So, and then, so that became established. And now like 30 years later, we're in this place where you can like tweet Rihanna. Yeah. Like yeah, so if yeah, you tweet the right, right thing, yeah, exactly. she yeah. might tweet you back. Like, yeah. like the veil of like, if you had a problem with Michael Jackson back in the day, you, you'd have to have a problem with it during the day. Then you go home and you write a letter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you send it to the fan club. <laughs> and yeah. You'd wait for the... Yeah. By the time you'd written the letter, you know you're over it. Yeah, exactly. Now they can just DM you. Now they can just DM you. So eventually what happens is that the veil between artist and consumer becomes so thin any pretense is like so is like as authentic as a diet coke yeah like you don't believe people who are just like not dynamic or like yeah. do you know what i mean yeah, like yeah, yeah. don't have any dynamic and this is the thing i've talked about on like my or like people ask me questions about my latest record which by the way i'd rather not talk about yeah this is, I think, one of the misconceptions that people have about artists. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? They're like, fuck each other. I'd rather, like, do this yeah. than fuck off. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to, like, over-explain my art. Do you know what I mean? No. But I just, like, have to do it my art. Don't <laughs> over-explain my music. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, just listen to it. Yeah, just listen to it. Do you know what I mean? Because it's, like... Also, it's good for me. Yeah. It's, like, it's good therapy. It is. Like, yeah. sometimes it's, like, I think it's about... You go to a therapist. This is how I feel. This is what that means. And they go... Are you sure this is not how you feel? And it doesn't mean that. And you go, yeah. oh shit, good. <laughs> That's how I feel with music sometimes. But um, I digress because I, I was just saying like, there's no, the artifice, there's no point in it. So what I feel with me is that like, if you're, with my word of the month is like earnest. So like, if you're earnest all the time, you get like ever diminishing returns on your like authenticity. Mm hmm because it's not met with anything else. Yeah. So for example, at least when I say something like real from the heart, m the people that are listening to it, my fans are like, fucking hell, I believe that at least. Yeah. Or, or fucking hell, he said that. Yeah. Can't believe he said that. Because that's not what I say all the time. Yeah. And I think that th this is the thing. It's like, I don't, I don't think that people should like pretend to not be people anymore in this kind of thing. And it's not post wokeness. Mm -hmm. I am bored of wokeness. Yeah. Like I do not see it as a viable world view. Yeah. But it's not that it's just like an era of more like authenticity. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. That's what I mean. Kind of back to the podcast conversation. I think we kind of openly will just kind of try to work things through on this and kind of not even arrive at a conclusion at the end. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I was completely wrong. I don't know. And I, I, I personally like when people do that because no one ever does. People, people think that it makes them some some type of like more uh, strong of a person to just be, be bullheaded, yeah, yeah, and 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 like just be kind of pontificating all the time. And it's actually, in my view, makes you much more stronger of a person and more realized, uh, more secure of a person to to. I don't know. Admit that. Maybe you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, well, the nuance of that conversation yeah, is yeah, the yeah. arrival. If you arrive at, you know, working that problem out, well, and actually it, well, it's about actually it. working that problem out is is what you should be arriving at. Yeah, it's, it's not coming to a conclusion because there aren't conclusions to everything. You know, no, it, things are true and not like things are contradictory. Well, it's like you said, it's like one day you're canceled and then the next day you're not. Well, I had a tweet the other day that like Ireland on Monday was like. We the, the nation of Ireland. Yeah, <laughs> We're like we hate you. Yeah, <laughs> never come back here. <laughs> You're cancelled. <laughs> Ireland on Friday was here is your number one album. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that it means anything. Back to Tramel. Yeah, Tramel says you can only know around about 150 people, so everybody has a social media account. So they, once it gets over 150 people, they naturally start performing to their followers yep. as an audience. Yeah. Now, when you have an audience, you become the main character. 
What yeah. is the main character be? Benevolent and good. Mm-hmm. Unless you're a troll, which you do anonymously. Mm-hmm. Nobody plays the main character in their real life. Yeah. So you search for ways to be the main character. And it's so solipsistic, but you don't realize that because everybody else is doing it. Which is why, again, I'm paraphrasing Tramel. You'll see Taylor Swift and some guy that works at a microbrewery that you went to school with <laughs> posting like they're talking to a packed convention center. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. this weird phenomenon. Yeah. And this is where cancel culture comes in because culture recognizes that everybody wants to be the good guy but people don't really have a bad guy in their life. Yeah. Most people don't have a worthy adversary. Yeah. That especially that suits the narrative of the benevolent protagonist. Mm-hmm. So every week culture generates a bad guy for all of us good guys yeah. to turn around and go, look how much I hate the bad guy and look how good I am for right. it. Mm-hmm. But the reason we forget about whatever moral indiscretion or I don't even have an example right now it's because we don't give a fuck about it. Yeah. Because it's just, I don't want to sound like Jordan Peterson, but it's just like fucking virtue signaling it. Like it really is. And everybody is tired of that. Yeah. Like it is tiresome. Like the infographic era is tiresome. Yeah. If we can solve the Middle East problem on Twitter, should we? <laughs> True. <laughs> True. <laughs> should we? Right. Yeah. No. No. (laughs) Should we treat things with more reverence? Because now everyone's an activist, which is apparently the most important role in the world. Mm -hmm. But everyone is one. Yeah. So it's the most important role that needs to be taken the most seriously that should be done. Yeah. But everyone is one. Yeah. Shouldn't we just have like really, really good ones? Yeah. And exactly. we do what we do and let them be like really good activists and we support them and empower yeah. them and uphold them and let them be pillars in their community or whatever it may be instead of all using it to demonstrate that we're a nice person because no one gives a fuck. Yeah. You know, like that David Foster Wallace thing, you will care a lot less what people think of you when you realize how seldom they do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. That doesn't apply to me, <laughs> but like if you're a normal person. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. I know. Doesn't it kind of fuck you up to think like so many people who you know casually, if you died, they'd just be like out chilling like two days later? Maybe the same night. Yeah. Well, I mean, what else are they supposed to do? I don't blame them, but it still messes with your head. Well, what, more the life more? goes on thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what bums me out about like a kind of the concept of like death. It's not that, that there's like, I'm because everyone's like, what's it like after you die? It's like the same before you were born. I wasn't like sat there for five billion years. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm not worried about that, but I don't like leave the party early. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's lame. Yeah, know? exactly. It's the idea that like culture and humor and jokes still go on without you. That's yeah. what weirds yeah. me out. It's yeah. not that like trees and mountains and stuff. It's that like <laughs> it's FOMO. nuance and yeah. arguments yeah. and technology and bullshit and nothing. Good parties. Yeah, Good it's gonna, parties there's another boredom, party. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Like like that's well, but that's that's what life's about. I mean, parties, man. You always talk about parties. Parties <laughs> is art. Yeah, exactly. They're parties important. Are art. They are. They really are. They that that are. they're more. Well, yeah. Again, this is the internet thing. They, it, you know, people look at parties or this is like the word party. I guess it's like an unserious thing, um, which I guess it can be. But but those are real kind of not only culturally defining things, but personally defining things. Like that. That's the kind of the point of life is a hundred other people. You know, and also. The, the 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 kind of if we talk about that senior idea that we always exactly. talk about it's like there's certain things that wouldn't exist in so for example there's like things the 75 is like quite a big band now and then you hear like other bands doing like versions of what we've been doing mm-hmm. and those ideas came from a place like my ideas like if we didn't throw like the nightmare before christmas eve which was like my house party <laughs> at the night the night before christmas eve which was the most infamous party this is at a time where like skins parties were a thing yeah, as well yeah. so like mm-hmm. the police were very involved it was in the tabloids and all this kind of thing 
But we had just like a bunch of bands play at my house. Now my friend's band Airship, Elliot ended up being in the band Editors, but he played this song with his band and it was like this like droning chord na, 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 and the bass kind of like revolved underneath and I was watching I was like what is this fucking song it was unreleased band didn't have music out we were just fucking around yeah. that song essentially is sex which now is like this huge song now if I wasn't like at that party not at a show yeah, because yeah. you don't go to a show and steal someone's song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go exactly. to a party. It's a, <laughs> I'm yeah. a party. Yeah. Yeah. It's my friend's band, and they're fucking going nowhere. Mm. You know, and I'm not giving you publishing, Elliot. It's like a droning chord. But, <laughs> <laughs> but still, like, it's like the inspiration was there, and um, yeah, no parties are art. I mean, you see it in like Meet Me at the Bathroom or whatever. Do you yeah, know what exactly. I mean? Like that exactly. kind of like when someone first discovers Julian Casablanca, it's like he is a person. His personality inspired like that whole, yeah. you know, moment. So, um, so that's the thing. Like, and there's less, there's less environments for like kind of unsanctioned kind of parties. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's kind of New York's strength, which is why I love it here. Yeah. But um, it it is important. It's it's when things get too <sighs> online, it becomes that main character syndrome thing. Like we're talking about, everyone's just individually speaking on a podium to their however many followers. That like it really kind of lose. I mean, the word community gets thrown around so easily that it almost doesn't mean anything anymore. But it's more nuanced than community. It is this kind of shared thing, like you're talking about. You hearing this band play, seniest thing. And and it, it's it, it's a shame because it's just like in a competitive economy because things are expensive and it's hard to make money off art. So people become a little more infighting now, not infight, just more competitive. And, and well, it's you a have bummer. The, you have this theory about the kind of weaponization of wokeism due to the economic situation exactly. that we're in. Yeah. 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 Explain that. I, I think, um, well, I mean, cancel culture or whatever you want to call it. It started under the idea that you wanted someone who was dangerous or predatory, etc. Mm. You wanted to put them, get them out of the way, make them not in a position where they can be predatory anymore. Okay, great. Who's going to disagree with that? But it evolved into something else. And I would notice just people took glee in these things happening. And it wasn't because they were excited that a dangerous person was gone. Because a lot of the times people being canceled, it was not even for anything dangerous. It was just something they said or what it was, you know, there there was there were no there was no threat from this person. It was just people were finding glee in someone else losing getting out of the race. Yeah, it's yeah. Like stalled. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It just oh, oh yeah, no, you're talking more about like there's more room for me now because this person's out of the way. This person is a little more successful artist than me. Now everyone's hating on them. Great. Now there's more room for me. And people were, I could feel like the ex people taking glee in someone else's downfall. And it wasn't because a dangerous person was not able to be dangerous anymore. It was purely self-interested. It was, well, now the, I can get ahead. That's the funny thing about it, though, is that like, what pe like the, the people, the, this confusion between like cancel culture and just what the town square is now is that like if you're Harvey Weinstein mm -hmm. and you're like a criminal and you get found out to be a criminal, then loads of people talk about it. Mm -hmm. And the main place that people talk is on Twitter. Yeah. That's not getting canceled. Yeah. Right. That's right, just right. being a criminal now. Yeah. 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 Like, that's why I'm not like worried because people ask me about that. Are you never worried about like the kind of shit? It's like, do you never think that the reason that I'm not worried is because I haven't done anything wrong? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. You talked me out of this. What? After after the infamous Crumps piece. Oh, the Crumps piece? Yeah, yeah. Which I fucking loved. It's <laughs> yeah. incredible. I love I mean, the whole thing. It's yeah. a great piece of writing. Yeah. You no, know, you talked me. You you gave me this this talk of like it doesn't actually have real world effect. You have to realize like what you're you're being affected by something that doesn't really exist. Well, it's 100%. Like, in it's so like, many words. It's like Nick and Adam. It's like the Stella guys. It's like yeah, the people yeah. who are like, how are these guys not canceled? Or like, aren't they so on the on the edge? It's like, they're not worried about it because they're basically good guys. Well, no, it's because yeah. you can you can, you can can sniff it out. 
You can t- you like can this tell. is the whole thing. It's like you know we were just laughing at what was that fucking Jordan Peterson shit where he said that <laughs> like <laughs> government mandated girlfriends and he was like being deadly serious. About <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. The guy just needs to get like so late. Um, yeah, the, but but what? Why did I mention that? Because like, what were we talking about? Um, Before fucking that. Uh, the the capitalistic competitive nature of no 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 but like the stuff. crumps piece and like oh of just how it uh, oh okay so you need to let like dumb or like racist or like bigoted people talk so you can be like so you can ignore them like, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah I mean like you can't like censor people because you like need to be able to hear where like the dumb shit is right yeah mm. but no I think that there isn't like a real world effect to that because it isn't people don't really like care that much yeah. Like people don't really care about anything apart from outside of their life. Everything yeah. else is kind of like a performance. So this is the thing is like with you guys, with like the come town, with the Adam Friedland show boys, with all those kind of things, like you know where it's coming from because you can feel it because you're a real person. Yeah. You don't need it explained to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a movie. Yeah. It's like if there's fuck if there's like a movie and it's about a guy and a woman and they have two kids and they're getting a divorce and one of the kids wants to you don't start the movie by saying hey this is John and this is Jane and they have a kid you just cut into the conversation mm. yeah. and your your brain and your empathy and your sem- your sympathy and your being a person kind of kicks in yeah so it's like I like sure misconstrue things all you want yeah but like the truth will out and the truth will out by how interested people are in it because like it's just not really it's just all fucking noise at the end of the day like you know like and we've kind of it's also about like conditioning mm-hmm. with like your or your audience if you're chronically online in like a woke way what you're really doing is waking up every day and being like i need to affirm to the world who i am yeah, right. So when you do that every day, yeah. so that great line in Louis where uh, Leno phones him up and mm-hmm. he's going to get the job at like Letterman. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you can't be funny every night. It's like, you can't be good and woke and virtuous and clever and smart and an artist every day, like on online. So when you try and do that, it kind of like, yeah, it kind of d- doesn't really work. And then I think that, you just get into these kind of cycles where you buy into this idea that you have all these like real world consequences that you don't because it's a fucking app for grown-ups. Like, Twitter is a, Twitter yeah. is a game for grown. Like, yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. be like really trivial, but like it's an app that you download that you go on and you get as many hearts as possible yeah. by through your behavior. Mm hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. And it's become this like part of society and stuff like that. But that's what the incentive structure is. Yeah. Nobody go nobody's like people go on Twitter for entertainment. You know? There's no like you know like the guy who sits down on like the Sunday and reads like the Sunday Times and yeah. like, the yeah. board. He doesn't go on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. He's not like what's going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's not why people are there yeah. Yeah. they're there to be like titillated and annoyed and you know it's like so it's kind of what it is that's why I've like stopped the woke shit because the woke shit for me wasn't even like woke shit it was like kind of real like I grew up like my granddad was on like the first drag queens in the UK mm-hmm. I grew up like with both of my parents being like uh, West End theatre actors mm. so like all of the people that around that were around me that were really successful were kind of like gay, black, interesting. Like they, they did things with their body or they, they were musicians <laughs> yeah. for a living. So I was just like, all right, I'll do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I saw where that came from. So then when I became a growing up and I became aware that, oh, you know what? There's actually kind of groups of people that try and like oppress these groups of people, whether it be gay people or black people. Like, not to be selfish, but, like, as an artist, I was kind of like, guys, like, this is where the best art comes from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want, like, good art, just, like, leave. Let these people be. Let these people be and just, like, do their thing. It was Mm -hmm. a very, like, I've always had, like, very classic liberal values. And what I would call, like, now, like, the morally obvious. Yeah, 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 totally. Don't oppress people. I mean, like, obviously. Yeah. 
you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> don't be like a fascist. Don't yeah. be horrible to people because of the way they live, live their life. And then, so like, but then it's a bit like, by one point, and so I'd always be saying these things, you know, like I support these ideas and then, you know, like wokeism and your kind of, you, you know, like the movement that happened in the wake of like Jordan Peterson, Peterson and all of your kind of mm. like SJWs and stuff. I'd find myself like saying what I thought were just like classic liberal beliefs and then they'd be like, yeah, and and defund the police. And I'd be like, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 like, no, no. I'm not, so which is this why I kind of like backed away from like the Twitter thing. Yeah, exactly, like, yeah. yeah. Because it was like, I don't want to be a pawn in the culture war. I yeah. also want to write about it and be able to make jokes. So yeah. I don't want to be like part of it and like be a hypocrite. Mm. And also like, it's not, yeah, it's not, um, I don't know. It, it, it's not something that I, so for me, like the things that I really love in my life are like r good, funny and like good art. Yeah. That's like the joy in my life. Yeah. So I was like, that's all I want to kind of present in, on, well, that kind of it comes through in your lyrics, especially like "Love It If We Made It" and in songs on the new one. You you like reference things in a way that kind of makes sense, that draws connections, that doesn't feel uh, like you're just kind of throwing things into the void. But it's not like really stating an opinion. I wouldn't say well, that that's exactly it's not it. political it music. Well, this is the thing. Now, this is only, this is not like something that I intended, but because right. people have said that to me before, I've I've reflected on what they meant, and I think it's because like I am not judge i'm not a judgmental person like, i love my opinions you know we talk shit like or whatever yeah. but like i'm not a judgmental person i'm also very willing to have an opinion listen to someone and have it change in real time yeah, yeah have yeah. it change yeah. in real time on camera yeah and be yeah. like totally no it, exactly that's what i was wrong about that mm. so the things would love it if we made it that song wouldn't have worked if i'd have gone you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that yeah, yeah, yeah. that's wrong that's right because my lyrics, because I'm always asking myself stuff, it's always questions. It's like, should we do that? Mm -hmm. Is this image okay? Like yeah, 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 yeah. all these rhetorical questions that were kind of like, no. Yeah. Like, the, I was just kind of stating the morally obvious. Um, I don't even think from a position of the left. I just think from a position of like a human. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So I think that there's a kind of, there is an objectivity in my lyric. There is a subjectivity in my lyrics where i'm i'm not i'm not judging because you can quite easily hear that i'm like figuring myself out mm -hmm. or like um but but yeah that i think you just kind of that 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 came with like probably like so much introspection on my first couple of records mm -hmm. then when i decided to go out I think that like that require. I knew that that required like a lot of empathy, right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because like I'd spoken about myself like yeah. with such um, with such analysis and kind of nuance and care. Mm. I felt like right. Well, if you're going to talk about the world, like you need to do it with the same kind of thing, which is why I just kind of try and do that. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about. It's interesting to hear you say. Like, how long were you off of Twitter for? Well. My actual Twitter that became like a thing that went in twenty well, that went at the George, George Floyd when George Floyd happened. Oh, nice! Because I tweeted that um, I was getting like hassled on Twitter to the point that I noticed it, which I never really did because I'd be yeah. soft cancelled a million times. Yeah, this is what I was talking about conditioning. Right. So I hadn't conditioned my audience to shut the fuck up, basically, yeah. about <laughs> stuff that was not a place to talk about on Matty Healy's Instagram. Right like fucking Israel, Palestine. Yeah. People asking me about that on my Instagram, but like, I have a bit more respect for the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Then kind of like, anyway. But, so what happened was, I was getting fucking hassled and I was in my era where I felt quite, um, my back against the wall. Like you, like you do, like when yeah, you got exactly. cancelled, you feel like it's not a nice feeling, man, mm -hmm. when loads of people are having to go at you. So everyone was like, why aren't you talking about this? Why aren't you talking about this? Talk about everything. Why aren't you talking about this? Is it because he's black? Is it I was like, what the fuck are you, what are you on about? So I think I tweeted something. And then I tweeted Love It If We Made It. Because Love It If We Made It was a song that came out two years before that I'd worked on for like a year and a half that wasn't a tweet that I'd thought up in a minute. Mm. It was like the most cohesive 
thing that I had to say on that subject, right. Right. which was what people were asking me for. Yeah. And then I did that. And then people were like, you're trying to monetize the death of George Floyd right. for the half a half a half a half a pence you get. For yeah, a exactly. I was a bit like, what the fuck are you on about? Like, and I didn't run away. I was just a bit like in that moment, I kind of realized it for what it was. You, it felt unhealthy. It, it, you know, it's not that it felt unhealthy. I just, I got the game. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I was like, okay. oh, there is no apology or there is no, you can't tweet enough stuff to make it right because that's not what people want. They're not there for you to make it right. They're there yeah, for you yeah, to yeah. continuously make it wrong. So I was just like, fuck it. I'll just write about it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I kind of like stepped away from it. And now... People don't expect me to talk on those issues. People kind of give me the benefit of the doubt a little bit and give me a little bit more context. Yeah. Because, yeah, because it's a bit like, you know, I don't quite do what like Harry Styles does, like not to call out Harry Styles. I think that he's great, but like he manages to like say like nothing. Exactly. Like, that's, nothing, like literally nothing. That's my sort of question because like you get people like to, like to me like an ideal would be someone like Burial who just drops an EP at yeah. the end of the year and like <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, you yeah. just don't hear from him. There's the Mark Fisher interview and then that's it. Yeah. But then we're obsessed with people like Gallo who I mean he had a moment on Instagram where he was like d doing his t-shirts and all of this and he's he's provoking and he has lots of opinions about lots of things and it's a, the, the idea of like the person alongside the art and like where is the ideal is it a constant engagement with the public and a provocation or conditioning well, this is the thing we were talking about like we'd watch videos or interviews of hunter s thompson probably mm -hmm. more than we'd read a lot of the stuff yeah. in like rolling stone that he did like like sometimes like like burrows as a figure i'm probably more interested in than burrows as a writer do you know what i mean like yeah. guy sin as a figure the same kind of thing um basquiat as a person way more than an artist um but like, so yeah, I, I don't know. For me, like, like Nick Drake fucking died. Yeah. So he's forever interesting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so there's yeah. like, there's in death, you have that. Right. But I feel like it becomes, I have a song called like Nothing Revealed, Everything Denied. Because it does become a bit like that. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. where people just become, what I don't want to be is so quiet on what I actually believe that I'm allowed to be celebrated through association and projection. So you stand me next to Demna Gasfalia and someone goes fashion icon. Yeah. Or right. you stand me next to Stevie Nicks on a red carpet and someone goes, so great songwriter. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I'm not really interested in association and those kind of yeah, things. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people are now, do you know what I mean? Definitely. Like it's very like, you know, everything's very associative. I think the 75 didn't really grow up in this scene that I'm so obsessed with because I've always really craved. Mm. We've always kind of been like kicked out of scenes, to be honest with you. Like we've never really been a allowed in scenes not right. to be like feel sorry for ourselves but we just never really fit in and then we never even fit in when we got big yeah 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 we just didn't like we didn't fit in with like the tame and parlor the mac Dem i like me and mac and mates and stuff yeah. like that but like never which was great because we were never in anyone's way yeah mm -hmm. but it's difficult sometimes because like i'll see us like headlining some like huge festival i'm like why yeah yeah we're like a band and like who else is, and there isn't really anyone else that's doing, and I don't think that I'm like that. But so we're a weird thing. Yeah. We've never been in a scene. We've never really been accepted by, we've just been real. We're like the biggest like cult band. Right. Mainstream yeah. doesn't really yeah, yeah, get yeah. us. Yeah. I think the we, alternative, we relate to this. The alternative yeah. scene are only just starting to get us on this record or yeah. maybe on notes. Mm-hmm kind of just been like the big like we always say like the biggest band in the world that no one's ever heard of yeah <laughs> yeah and i think also like things that were cool in 2014 2015 people like us are very aware of so yeah. like hating on the 1975 is a bit like old school and <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah. seeing as we've survived and we're still fucking pretty yeah, sick you yeah know what i mean it's a bit like <laughs> yeah no that is a weird feeling we i mean we talk about this all the time because we're obviously we have 
I don't smoke vapes, by the way. It's just because Curtis lent me his because you can't smoke in it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good on you. What is this? Like, I think it's peach berry. Girl and <laughs> yeah. gummy bear. Yeah, girl, girl. Girl flavor, <laughs> chick <laughs> flavor. <laughs> Curtis likes kid stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, fuck, what was I saying? I don't remember. No, but it's it, uh, the reason I was bringing it up with you is because like your music is good enough that you could have no public engagement, and I think it would probably be as big as it is. Yeah, but like, but I had to. Okay, fair. Yeah, fair enough. But like, there's some people that do that like really well, and it's kind of like Frank Ocean does that, right? Mm-hmm. He does, and he does yeah. it like perfectly. But that's Frank Ocean. Yeah, and I think that like. With me, regardless of whether I like it or not, I'm not a gallo, you know, but me definitely sets the context for like what the 1975 is. Yeah. Like without me, like even talking to you guys in the way that I talk, like the 1975 is a bit more confusing. Like I do yeah, give yeah, it yeah. context. In a yeah. cool way. I'd, I I don't even really care that much to be honest, KJ, because like I, I I grew up like are we getting to two conversations here? Nep- <laughs> nepotism, nepotism, baby. Let's put that to one side. I grew up in a invi- I grew up where my parents were famous in the UK, right? But they were famous in this kind of you have like the National Enquirer, right? We yeah. have like the tab like the tabloids in the nineties were fucking brutal. But the people that they would go for, you know, you would occasionally get your Angelina Jolie and stuff like that, but they would be like soap stars. Right. That would be like the level that you would go to. So I grew up going to the shop on my way to school and seeing like my home life, like my parents' marriage or something like that, like in the newspapers and stuff like that. I just grew up with this idea that my life was subject to Mm -hmm. conversation. Right. Before the idea of internet forum, which is kind of why I'm so obsessed with like this idea of forum and the internet. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the reason I mention that is because I was a witness to the mediation of the media quite a lot when I was younger. Right. How you do it, why you do it, when you do it. And I was never that. Like, I was always me. I was never going to be an actor. I was never going to do what my parents do. Like, the 1975 started when I was 13. Like, you know what I mean? We wrote, we wrote sex when we were 15, mm-hmm. roundabout. So it was like, it was all, we were always going to be doing that. So I didn't expect, like, fame. I don't know what, like, the 700, 800 cap venues around here are, but in Manchester, if you were playing those, you were fucking massive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's, for me, where I thought my band would be playing. Right. Like, AFI played the Academy one. Right, yeah. I, that was they were huge. If you ask me, yeah, the Apollo, that's a different level. Mm-hmm. The yeah. arena, it's Green Day. I mean, forget about it. You yeah, know what I mean, but when I did get famous in my own way, I think a switch went on in my head where I was like, I can't do this fucking chat. Like, I like, I'm not in Daft Punk. I'm not Burial. I, I'm not from. You know, I'm not. I'm, I'm not a um I'm not a ghost. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm kind of like a lad in a, in like a real band. Yeah. And I think that I decided to make every interview a conversation, which is why I became such an interesting interview. But it was only because I wasn't doing interviews. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was just meeting yeah, grown ups totally. in pubs and telling them how I felt. And then that's why I got pissed off with headlines. That's what I don't like about interviews is headlines. I don't mind interviews. It's fucking headlines. Yeah. It's yeah. like I'll say something and then it says, Matty Healy says this. Yeah. But that's like I've gone fucking. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, in the barn, stood up and being like, can I fucking tell you my opinion? That's not <laughs> yeah. what I've done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was in a conversation yeah, and yeah, that yeah, was yeah. said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it would be in any conversation. Then you text. So then, and then that's the thing that goes on Twitter. And then everyone's like, "What's a, what a fucking silly cunt? Why is he talking like that?" And I'd feel the same. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't talk in headlines. That's low key why you are a bit gallo, because that's sort of his gri- gripe with 
yeah, his says, interview. Yeah, he says he's always history. taken out of context, and yeah. he's just trying to talk, and that's why he won't ever be recorded ever again. But that's the opposite of me. I'm like, I'm just gonna push just, through. Yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Well, because, no, Gallo early career. Yeah, like, Gallo, because because the truth will out. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. People like some guy from the Times asked me a question the other day. He was like, "Well, why do you think that when people do get like called out on the internet, they'll like retreat with their tail between the legs?" I was like, "Maybe because they did it." Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. if I got gripped doing something like being a wrong un, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> I retreat <laughs> with my tail between my legs. I don't. I haven't done anything like wrong. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So like, I'm not like that worried about like expressing my opinions you know what i mean and and i do i do this is the thing i'm in the business of selling records they're in the business of selling newspapers right yeah but it's not even the company like if you're a young writer what do you want do you want to do you want to sell matty healy's record to the best of your ability <laughs> yeah exactly or do you want to demonstrate your ability as a writer yeah of course you want to demonstrate your ability as a writer so it's never like a it's never an objective trade-off do you know what i mean mm. so um i just do it now do you know what i mean and like let people take stuff out of context because like who gives a fuck yeah yeah it doesn't fucking matter yeah What's well, interesting how it paints the listening experience though, because it actually does become 4D when you're like listening to like your guy's new record, and I can like go through your stories. I actually I like the 4D, like it bleeds over into reality in a way that I enjoy. Well, this is the whole thing. Like, it, why can't like why it's all real? Like, yeah. it's all one part of like one holistic expression. Like, it's a person. Like, that's why people relate to the 75 because they relate to me because people like people. Yeah, they don't like ideas. They, do, they for a bit they do. Yeah, but what people like is like dynamic and conversation and truth and change and growth and <coughs> every fucking comment on songs that people love about seventy five is being like, I've been listening to the seventy five since I was like sixteen yeah, and yeah. like I've grown up with them. Yeah, and it's like. There's this idea, like, who was it, like, Bo texted, like, Bo Burnham texted me the other day out of the blue just saying that, like, what's nice is that, like, like, n being afraid to grow up makes you less subversive and less interesting. Whereas, like, embracing growing up is kind of cool and sexy and, mm -hmm. like, not, like, getting old, like, growing up. Right. Because, like, your 20s... Especially with me, with the 75, like, I was defined by, like, all of that postmodern shit. Nihilism, addiction, self-obsession, you know, all those kind of things. And those nihilism, and it's very, those are, that's kind of a cool, appropriate, sexy way of being, like, in your mid-20s. Mm. But eventually, life starts presenting you with different, less sexy ideas. Responsibility, question mark. Family, question mark, depending where you are. Yeah. And when I talk about responsibility, I don't just even mean, I mean like personal, I mean yeah, like yeah, communal. Yeah. I mean yeah. like, like just being like, being in service, you know? Yeah. Like these ideas aren't like raw dogging and doing smack. Yeah. Like that's easy to write about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's harder to like write about like earnestly wanting something yeah. that, that isn't like edgy and cool and fucking gnarly and yeah, totally. makes you look a little bit lame and it's just not yeah. as cool. Right. You know, like and I think that that's what I like about where I am because I can kind of do that and it be real. Because guys also who are in bands, which there isn't a lot of now, yeah. but especially historically, get to like a time in their career and they want to like own being a man. Mm. So they become macho. And we had this whole conversation about like macho and tough, like REM, tough. Yeah, right. Like everybody hurts, okay, it's a bit, you know. But like, <laughs> I love that song. It's the best like, song, yeah, come yeah. on. Yeah. 
But um, there's that. But still, it's like we didn't want to remotely become like macho. Didn't want to talk about ideas in a kind of macho way. But um, I do talk about masculinity on the record quite a lot. Like yeah. I talk about like school shooting and like yeah well that's a strange one because yeah there's so there's such a difference there is there is like clearly and it can be debated forever why or how or or whatever or if it's entitlement or if it's legit whatever but there's clearly like a problem of young men feeling alienated and Mm -hmm. disenfranchised and then you have your kind of like post jordan peterson influencer types who are like essentially telling them how to be a man. Yeah, exactly. We spoke and, about this. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of those guys actually do have some good points, but there's so much more to being secure as a man than just, like, toughening up. Well, Jordan Peterson's just doing what a lot of people's dads should have done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there's there's something... Of th- th- that's kind of what, what I'm trying to say is there's what's missing in the conversation is this thing you're saying of, like, being in touch with yourself and your responsibilities... And and your responsibility to the world around you, and being like a moving part of society, like mm. that. Th- th- there's a huge difference between that and like just toughening up or something, or, or or being like just taking what you want and being like s- like steamrolling people. Hundred percent, and still wanting to be part of like relevant like conversations, like the conversation that we were talking about. Like, yeah, it it's it's not just a problem with 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 men, right? It's a problem with young yeah, white men. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right. And it's a phenomena and it's not really being addressed. Like, I think the way that I try, the, I think the empathy that I come at it with that song is in like the second verse. I have like, you got to show him he's a bitch. You got to fuck him up good. You got to smash the competition, go and kill it like a man should. It's like, I heard somebody talk about this idea that like, <clears throat> if the only vocabulary or like lexicon we're providing like young children like young men Mm. to like assert themselves is one of such like violence and domination yeah Yeah. some kind of toxic masculinity especially in like underfunded forgotten parts of the country is kind of inevitable so there has it's very very easy to demonize like some 18 year old kid who dresses up the joke as the joker and goes and fucking shoots a bunch of people like of course it's easy and maybe appropriate to demonize them but that comes from a place and the problem that you're talking about is that the right wing are incredibly equipped to deal with that disenfranchised type of person Mm -hmm. because they have this ideal masculinity whatever it is that's presented in the books of like jordan peterson or whatever and stuff like that like it's like for example like we don't have an ideal liberal masculinity yeah what is it like the poster boy is it joaquin phoenix in a peter hoodie yeah right what is it well this is what i think it's us and even though even (laughs) though (laughs) but to finish my point what happens is is that you have these floundering kids that aren't on particular floundering men who aren't particularly on the left and right but aren't being addressed in any way by anybody really mm. and then the right then Jordan Peterson turns up and he's like oh you want to be a man here's 12 rules yeah. how to do it yeah. and they're like fuck thank fuck and yeah. then I, I'm not necessarily talking about Jordan Peterson but a lot of these characters then they kind of sneak in the paranoid right wing kind of yeah, shit exactly. in the back door but once they've got the kids in there like the recruitment that the right wing have of like young disenfranchised men is not met with the recruitment of the left because we don't really know what we're doing. Well, yeah, because they're not. But, uh, yeah, and I also think. Where? I also think, as endlessly funny as they are, true. Like, progressing where? Progre- where are we going? No, it, no, that's true. I've no, that's true. That. There, there's all like, look at what you've done wrong, or look at why you have to take a back seat. There's no like way out mm-hmm. for them, and that that is a problem. And as endlessly funny as like alpha, beta, Chad, virgin jokes are, I do think that <laughs> paradigm has like broken young kids' brains a lot. That's what I'm saying. Like people, like young men, are so afraid of doing anything, and even, not even young men, like people our age, yeah. like are so afraid of doing anything that is perceived even to themselves as like beta, beta, that they like regress to some kind of like I trying to become macho. In oh, some way. so are we getting into like a post, like into the Andrew Tate kind of influencer kind of, yeah. world, I, right? I, I don't. I don't. I'm not even saying that this is like a thing that people are like watching influencers on. I'm just saying this is kind of like an ambient thing in the zeitgeist that kind of affects men. I think. So there's like um. I haven't really thought about that. They want like people really want to just show 
strength in a really kind of generic old definition of strength. And it's right. actually, there's like... As a reaction to what do you think? The, just the past kind of like... Of just kind of thinking thinking that they're being like being paranoid of being kind of like uh unappreciated stepped on this kind which are, which are natural ways to feel but they're very easy to feel in the modern economy i think yeah and just like the modern attention economy and and especially as an artist in like a really competitive landscape people really it so basically my whole point is i feel like as smart and progress and ha as smart and progressive as uh young culture is now um, people kind of end up accidentally reverting to just like really old generic ideas of strength, even men, even if it's they think they're doing it in some new progressive way. Well, the, we yeah, I mean, there's that whole like that weird new form of like trad masculinity. Yeah, yeah like exactly. Dudes like dressing like yeah. they work. They and we're just like back to the beginning. Of, we're just back to the beginning <laughs> of the cycle. When they don't. Yeah. You should have seen New York five years ago, man. Um, I mean, Everyone yeah. just like in Carhartt. Carhartt yeah, like construction buying, like used painters' outfits. They were chopping wood in Dime Square. <laughs> I was taking pictures in South London at one point and it, we were genuinely sending photos being like, is this guy working for National Rail, or is he, or hipster, is he yeah. on his way to the pub in Peckham? Like, yeah, I can't yeah. tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there is no difference. I know. They did it well. It was a good cosplay. This is the thing because I think that maybe I'm doing that a little bit, like with this. I don't know. That's kind of like no, but this took a while to not. Well, it's definitely still pretentious, but this took a while to be authentic. Yeah. Did you like, wear a, a uniform in school growing up? Yeah, I did. Me too. Oh, you wore a uniform? That's yeah. interesting. So did I. Jack and tie. Oh, did you? Yeah. Because I was until always, high school. I was super jealous of like because I grew up on like obviously like you know like Moesha like all like just mm -hmm. American TV shows. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The fact that you guys didn't have a uniform blew my mind. Yeah. yeah. Well, I went to Catholic school, so well, we had a uniform. So, but the majority of schools are, are not uniform, right? When public got, schools are. When I got kicked out of my private school, I went to the public school and I was stoked because I was like, I can like wear jeans. But isn't that... so? That's my, normal, okay, so yeah. Okay, so this is what I think. There's two things that would have stressed me out. The thing that would have stressed me out is the idea of getting dressed for my peers at that age. Yeah, yeah, yeah Every yeah. day. Yeah. That's one thing. Yeah. Second of all, if you have a uniform, you can't like see who the poor kids are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of important in an environment where like kids are developing like social skills yeah. and being respectful. Yeah, that's and, like, true. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I've, um, but no, this doesn't come from kind of school uniform. It comes from kind of like, I think maybe there's an element of me where like, I don't like men in shorts. I don't think men should yeah. be wearing shorts. I never wear shorts. Yeah. We'd never I think wear men shorts. should be wearing shorts. I don't yeah. think like, there's, there is a an idea of like traditional masculinity that I like. I've played with it in the past and like wore skirts, but then that fucking pissed me off because like <laughs> people were talking about it as if it was some kind of statement. I was like, you've not seen every band ever. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, look at, yeah. Like, look no at statement. any band. It's like people wear it because it looks cool. It looks cool. And yeah. I was in Australia <laughs> and it was hot, cool. And our trousers were hotter. Yeah. And yeah. I wasn't yeah. like making a statement on gender fucking roles i was wearing a skirt it's 2022 can we stop also trying to take ownership for ideas that have already been yeah, like kind no, of quite that, well that thing, thought that that and whole thing kind of like started to be like built into the economy yeah they're like in coffee table books yeah. these images yeah <laughs> 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 Love guys wearing skirts yeah. on stage it's yeah. like the <laughs> oldest shit it's so like when I get celebrated for stuff like that, I just find it like so bored. I just find it reductive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when we're like sitting in New York City where like all the people that like pioneered that shit just like died. Yeah. yeah. Because they were gay. Yeah. And they were out here yeah. and they were living a real fucking bohemian lifestyle. And now you have people just like wearing a dress and people being like, oh my God, that's transformative. It's like, did you see that recent Tramel thing about like, Andy Kaufman? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we could do a whole pod on like Andy Kaufman, right? Yeah, of course. Well, but I, but to link those two, something that you said that I wanted to bring back real quick. You said people like people, not ideas. So something that's interesting. Uh, this was kind of my whole beef with the anonymous thing. Yeah. Is there's something more interesting when you an idea coming from a person that context is important 
there's you can not I don't mean to say like judge based on their history or their context whatever but like you see how a person works you see maybe you start to understand how they came to idea why they're even working through that idea like that there's there's like gives an ambient quality to the idea that's like more mm. transformative mm. that's like less to do with language it's way more than just like reading a paragraph mm. you know what i mean like it's like it coming from an individual in their own context is actually adds to the idea yeah 100 percent. like like you cut well it does but then you get into the conversation yeah so that's true but then we haven't had we haven't managed to finish the cultural conversation of can you separate an artist and their work yeah I, I think you can't, but that's fine. I think it's good, and I think it, you shouldn't. I think it's part of the game. I yeah, think it's part I th of what you figure out. I as think an it shouldn't, it, but I think it shouldn't affect the way you think about the work, or, or it can affect the way you think about the work, but it shouldn't change your enjoyment of the work. I agree, because the context is important. I know. I know. I try and think about this all the time, like because. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it really, if it really matters because it becomes an objective thing once it's happened, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I recently said something like about Michael Jackson and like all the like Michael Jackson heads were like coming at me and like, <laughs> you know, saying that I'm a piece of shit. A yeah. lot of people told me that he outsold me. Which I didn't know, so it was good to know. <laughs> 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 but, um, but yeah, like, I, the, my problem with Michael Jackson, let's use Michael Jackson as, as an example. In order to, like, com to separate, w let's say, what happened and, like, Michael Jackson, I have to, like, go through, like, my whole childhood. I have to go through, like, Universal Studios, mm. E.T., yeah. the Mega Drive. Like, yeah. It was all part of this one thing. People don't want to go back there and taint it with this idea mm. of, you know, fucked up shit with kids. Yeah. And I think that's the problem with a lot of a lot of these kind of issues is that it depends how like big and important the artist has been to culture. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It kind of is like Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. The thing is, with, yeah. The thing is, it bums me out with Kanye is that like we all like he's obviously somebody who is dealing with grief and has mental health issues. Yeah. But that's not an excuse to like do anti-Semitism. Yeah. It's not really, is it? It's like it gets to a point where it's like, I think with Kanye is that this is what we were talking about before. I'm all for the kind of Kaufman-esque, Warholian-esque, like blurring of boundaries. If you can do something in a film, why can't you do it in real life? Like his belief that him and Kim are like the kind of ultimate mm -hmm. piece of art of the past like decade and stuff yeah. like that. I mean fair argument whatever do you know what i mean but like <laughs> there's stuff that like is more important than art mm -hmm. like um people people are more important than art and there's kids involved in this artistic expert that's what fucking pisses me off yeah that like the whole thing about the divorce and all this kind of shit regardless of all this anti-semitic recent shit it's like i hate people I hate artists who like create problems in their life so they can write. Yeah. Like that's yeah, a lame right. thing. For it, yeah. Example. Yeah. I'd hate to be a person who did that. I just think like getting like, I, if I was a kid and I was being, and I was having like high art concepts of what reality is forced on me by my dad, I'd be really scared. Yeah. 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 Because like I just want to know what reality is. Like when I saw the Truman show at 10 years old, that was enough to fuck me up. Oh yeah. I had to check that my parents were my parents. <laughs> yeah. 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 Me too. Like, when you're a kid, your imagination is so insane. Mm -hmm. Like be an artist, be an adult, but like let kids be kids. Yeah. 
Like, you know, that's like, you got to draw a line, like when you're being a conceptual artist, like when you're hurting people, because it's just not fucking worth it. You know, yeah. art's not worth hurting people. It's I, true. I agree. It's true. I ask myself that question with Kaveh's work all the time, too, because like his kids and his wife are implicated in that very directly. But I enjoy it as entertainment. It's weird, but it's, I enjoy it as entertainment, but I also get a lot no, spiritually I get it out too. of it. So, so do I. And yeah. I find it inspiring. And there's a part of me that's like, well, there's an element of the kind of sacrificial. Like, there's some people that are like quite willing to sacrifice themselves for that, mm-hmm. which. Again, yeah, I don't know how comfortable I am with other people's reality being deeply, deeply affected by your art because of how much reverence you give your art without you becoming just an right. asshole. Well, I think that this yeah. goes back to the thing we said earlier. It's it's the idea of you, of a, of a figure as like a god versus a, a figure who's like a part of like a moving machine. It's like this... You, as an artist, you do you have a role that doesn't you can't think of it as above other roles. It's important. It's like rare, exactly, and it's and it's unique, maybe more unique than other jobs you could have. Yeah, but it, you are still part of like an oiled machine, exactly. and you have to like know that that's your place. Yeah, you're part of a society, you're part yeah. of an economy, and not a transcendent being. Exactly, They're, like they are. We are the kind of we are like artists mm. do like civilize society mm-hmm. that is kind of their job like politicians and econo- economists don't do that yeah we don't look to politicians to be signposted towards utopia we look to artists now when that's when you're bob dylan and you realize that and feel that mm-hmm. fucking hell that must feel like a a profound more important thing than a window cleaner or this or that but it's not it's a service yeah exactly exactly it's it's a self service and we all have those we all have ceremony we all have sex we all have whatever it may be some people's is creation but yeah i think that a lot of artists get lost in the kind of i've done it just like basically being an asshole mm mm-hmm. Because I was doing something artistic. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Is well, I think it might come from some kind of feeling artists have that they're, they sh- should be some kind of leader, which I think is a noble way to feel. But if you're actually trying to lead people, you're not a messiah. You're part you're you're with them you know what i mean it's just like it's just this kind of knowing your role like knowing it's just responsibility it really it's it's responsibility i I think the thing is with me though is that like i do like like high art and stuff like that we do talk about it but i don't come from it yeah yeah right i come from like punk like 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 late punk like you know like let's say like for me the last real punk bands that refused that was like my favorite band that's our shit so that kind of thing. And yeah. I came from rooms in Manchester, like 30 people in them with punk bands who would like go on stage and say something. And it was a bit like, well, if you've got something to say, get on the stage. So there was this element of, it's a bit like hippieism, like post the civil rights movement. Mm-hmm. Civil rights movement happens. Loads of people who have dedicated their life to happening that go fucking hell. Mm-hmm. We're kind of just like emancipated black people. Like if we can do that, for black people, we can kind of do that for everybody. Yeah, They tried, the politics didn't quite keep up, mm. and hippieism started because it was a reaction to this idea of changing the man. We're not going to change society, so let's change ourselves. Yeah, But if we all change ourselves, then we can change our society. I kind of came from an environment like that. Mm-hmm. Like, let's change this room, and then let's change another room, and then let's change another room. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And... I don't know why I started talking about that, but like that's kind of like where I came from, where this kind of belief that like it can like really make a difference, like music. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whether it can change the world, and when we say that, like, can it like affect like power, like real power? Mm-hmm. 
I don't know because I don't believe that the people, I believe that most people who have the ability to acquire the amount of people that they do are inherently Philistines. Not people that don't have baskets on the wall, not people that don't have like big investments in art, people that aren't really transformed by art. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. People that haven't like heard a song or watched a movie and left the movie theater and been a different person. Yeah. Like, so I think that like musicians and people on the left and liberals and people that come from that world, not just liberals, but pe artists, we're constantly trying to fight the power of the world with beauty and truth and music yeah. and empathy. And um, and if we don't get that, then we go, then we try and shame them. Mm -hmm. The powerful don't operate on any of those. Mm -hmm. They don't operate on beauty or selflessness or transcendence or shame. Mm -mm. They they're purposefully in obfuscation of those ideas in order to acquire as much power as possible. So, you know, when we've had the Sex Pistols and we've had like everything and we've had the Clash and then we've had like generations of bands and then we've had like the whole 2000s of 10s and we've had, you know, another Tremelian idea where I'm coining that now. Yeah. <laughs> where, um, where we used to expect our artists to be... I was going to bring this up, yeah. Right? We used to expect our artists to be <coughs> cigarette-smoking, bohemian outsiders. Yeah. And now we expect them to be, like, liberal academics. I don't know when that happened. I don't know why that happened. Yeah. It's not really something that I subscribe to, but it's something that I started to subscribe to. And I'm not a liberal academic. Yeah. I'm a cigarette smoking <laughs> bohemian outsider who doesn't really know that much about politics and stuff like that. But I know what I feel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that those like those feelings are important. They're the yeah, things exactly. that move us, but they're not the things that change the world. No. Well, I think it's because people look up to artists, musicians, filmmakers, whatever, because they do it they admire them in a way that they don't politicians like politicians like the 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 world has sort of warmed up to the idea that pe the people in power are not the people that should be so i feel like it's actually maybe more of an audience reaction of what do what do what do my actual heroes think right. about these ideas well the, the, but see that's also and this is another argument for cave and all this other stuff we're talking about someone being very open and candid and just kind of in the in the spotlight in that way it's it's because there you see a politician you don't see, even people who are not smart know that that's not like a real person yeah, that's 100%. not like really who that is and a lot even if you see like pop stars movie stars they people know the same thing but trump did this yeah exactly exactly, exactly. that's what trump exactly. did that's why he won exactly yeah. and also like the one thing that the well the stupid thing that the left did was try and play trump at his own game because that was the dumbest thing yeah. in the world Second of all is what Trump did was everyone wanted to present him as this like gargoyle that had flew down and landed yeah. on the kind of political system yeah. that we knew. But he wasn't. He just basically went to America. Hey, listen, you know, all those guys over the past 20 years, like on the left and the right, who have been like, vote for me and I'll look out for you or vote for me and I'll look out for you. My... You're my, you like, I, I'm going to work in your best interests. Yeah. No, they're fucking not. And either am I. Yeah. <laughs> the only <laughs> difference is that I'm going to fucking say it. Yeah. yeah. And you can say shit like that. Yeah. So that's why people started going out and like saying whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. Do you know what it I mean? Yeah. Stuff like that. And it's this kind of idea that like, you know, like it, it hasn't really served anybody like can you actually like see much difference in like kind of like especially in the uk and kind of like left-wing ideas and right-wing ideas like economically like, like it's not that much difference yeah, nowadays right. is there? there's not much separate separation no. like and i think that people are just like super dis disenfranchised which is why you get brexit which is why you get trumpism because mm -hmm. people are just like fuck this it yeah. doesn't work yeah like nothing changes like i do this i queue i don't want to yeah. queue up yeah. <laughs> Maybe fucking queue up for nothing, like no food at the end or yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. Right. bullshit. <laughs>
But then again, that's why I'm not in politics because I don't really have that many in depth. <laughs> <Yeah>. kind of <laughs> <text>. <laughs> Neither do we. That's why we never talk about it. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't know. Not like now we're getting real kumbaya, but um, I don't know the the hippie thing you're talking about. We change ourselves. We change our communities. It like seeds out from there. I always kind of. I always said I'm low key a hippie. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I kind of. I that's th- the problem with that is that it doesn't really work because that happened, and then the hippieism kind of in this again the politics didn't keep up with that, and then you got into the seventies when you got all this weird transcendent self help. Let's right. become fucking yeah, yeah. spiritual. Yeah, no, 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 it won't affect politics. I'm not saying that, but it can. I don't know. There, we, but, we're like finding ways around it. It's but, just, it but it's but it's against individualism though, because like even in the late. I don't want to say like w- as soon as consumer capitalism adri- uh, like uh, diagnosed the issue was individualism. Yeah. Oh, you guys want to express yourselves as an individual. I can help you do that. Here's a fucking car and a Coke and a vape and a whatever. And like mm. consumer capitalism really like kicked off. Like the idea of like individualism was just sold, repackaged, sold, repackaged to the point that now like, the idea of like communalism is like what what you think about is like a fucking commune. Yeah. Like like I don't really know what we're talking about when we talk. Like obviously, I believe that any kind of change is going to be a grassroots change where people don't accept things and they demand changes from the things. But it just seems like a lot of that protest and shit that i've seen over the past couple of years just gets absorbed yeah yeah Yeah, it does it just gets like absorbed it doesn't like do it It doesn't do anything apart from make people know that they've done it Mm -hmm. um but yeah politics is fucking lame yeah i don't want to talk about that i was gonna say well then (laughs) maybe we'll jump from here into into your own lane like what? What would like? I guess we kind of said this before, but what, like, what do you think the future of music is? What do you think? Okay, so we were talking about earlier, thirteen-year-old kids they didn't listen to full songs. I think about that all the time. I I thought about like are we only doing this podcast because it feels good in the attention economy to be releasing things all the time, and we can never get that through art. Is this I mean, like a yes. weird placeholder? Yeah, uh, honestly, yeah. Um, I also I believe in the medium itself. Well, I, yeah, of course. I mean, I'm not not to belittle it, but yeah. but I don't know what like what. It's only going to get worse. It feels like so. What what can we even say to like young musicians or young any artist? Like how to combat this attention economy thing? Well, I mean. It's this thing, isn't it? It's like short-term pleasure versus long-term satisfaction, right? Mm-hmm. So all the incentivization is towards short-term pleasure. But we know where the satisfaction is. It's in the walk and the book and the cooking and the fucking yeah. making the album and the making writing the movie. It's not in the chocolate bar and the wank and the tweet and the instant dopamine, right? We know that. So it's a bit like, I don't know, like as much as I like... As much as, yeah, okay, I have, like, anecdotes about, like, kids not appreciating the formal standards that we appreciate, like, sure. But, like, there's also been, like, this myth going on for, like, 15 years now of, like, the death of the album, which is bullshit. Yeah, 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 I agree. And it's something that's made up by, like, low-level people who work in the music industry because, like, the truth is, like, if I make a record or if like big artists make a record, like if me, or I'm not putting myself next to anybody, but if like me, Lana, Taylor, yeah. Kendrick, whatever, if we make a record, there's no one in those rooms. Yeah. Mm. There's like us and yeah. our people. Right. There's no bureaucracy. There's no like suits and stuff like that. Yeah. There's no people that work at labels. The people that work at labels, which is fucking shit tons of people, by the way. Yeah. They're working on, and I don't, I'm not slagging anyone off here, right? I'm just using examples of like singles artists. Someone's like, like Megan Trainer, for example. She's a singles artist, right? Yeah. I'm not saying she's bad or good or whatever. She's a singles artist. There's loads of artists like that. That's who people in the music industry work on. 
because they have work to do. Mm. Yeah. They have to sell it. They have to manufacture it. They have to find songwriters. They have to get the thing. They have to get the stylist. They have to link up the stylist with the art. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not a, It's not this just, li- this, not this creative expression that's just coming from someone. Yeah. Whereas if you have a creative expression that's coming from someone, you just need to facilitate that. So the death of the album is bullshit. Tell me an important piece of music in the past 15 years that hasn't been an album. Yeah, it's true. There isn't one. There isn't one. It's bullshit. And it's like, so I don't think that like, okay, maybe there's 13 year olds that like don't give a fuck about songs, but there's 16 year olds that want a new Playboy Carti record. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't just want a song. They'd be really, really pissed off a 16 year old if Carti or whoever it was, Trippy or anyone like that came out and they were like, by the way, my new record is th- all 30 yeah. seconds and it's just on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, no. Th- th- that's not what's happening. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we are taking music into our social media performance and changing how much reverence we give music. But still, like the music in itself is like, you know, still... It's still like profound. Like, there's nothing more profound than, like, on a human experience than like landscape and music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, if you're on, if you're at the most beautiful place in the world, and there's an orchestra playing behind you, it doesn't matter. Like, if you've been on TikTok before, like, right. it just matters whether like you can connect to art. And if you can, like, I think the form of it is kind of like irrelevant and it's always changing you know like we're always in these kind of moral panics about how we're communicating like remember we started texting right like, everyone's gonna be fucking remember mike tv yeah we had like square eyes because yeah. watch too much tv we're always <laughs> yeah. in like a moral panic about technology yeah, it's true what i'm excited about is figuring out like what's gonna happen with that like douglas copeland idea where he says that once a once a um an art form is superseded. Is that the right? Does that what is that right? Superseded to come. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like taken over mm-hmm, by. Mm-hmm. Once an art form is taken over by another, it allows the previous. Once a form mm-hmm. is taken over by another, it allows the previous to become an art form. Yeah. So TV, for example. Exactly. Was TV just... was the only thing we had. Yeah. So everything had to be half an hour because you had to fit everything in no no this guy's show needs to be on and this guy's show needs to be on Mm -hmm. as soon as the internet turns up and starts presenting people with different environments it freed up tv yeah and you immediately got the sopranos you immediately got the wire you immediately got huge big art forms tv became an art form hbo started all these kind of things yeah 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 it was a true art form it's true once one form sub like takes over another it freeze the other one up to become truly artful yeah the internet is so expansive i can't quite imagine what like form is going to take over the internet yeah but i do already see in like substack patreon wherever it may be these interesting places that there is this kind of emergence of like art happening again in these kind of spaces yeah. do you know what i mean yeah. like because it is for websites yeah. And people are finding spaces to like create kind of interesting niches. Yeah. I remember uh, like probably early 2010s when so- I was hearing like, oh, the reason huge hip hop albums have are filled with skits and they're so long, they're longer than ever now is because it like racks up streaming. And that's so it's like this response to like, it's a way to make more money. And I was like, whoa, that's so fucked. Like this is ruining the form. Like people are just now incentivized to like put filler on their albums. And I was like, but then albums are only the length that they were because they made records and that's how much fit on a record and CDs. And it, it was always a response to, I don't know, how it was consumed. And yeah, exactly. I was like, this, it's exactly, it's this new moral panic. And then once I actually took a step back, I was like, it's all the same shit. It's fine. This, these are like fake cultural conversations. It's not actually affecting Exactly, because we're also having the conversation about how like young people aren't listening to new music now. They're yeah. listening to old music. I mean... The 21st century is weird. We've already spoken about Mark Fisher's like the, the like what he really talks about is the 21st century's like inability to define itself aesthetically mm-hmm. post like 2002. Yeah, yeah, three. And we have beef with that. 
Huh? We both have beef with that. You, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like, I struggle with it massively. I've really lent into it with this whole postmodern fuck it, burn it down kind of yeah. approach yeah. to it. But, like, um, even Amy Winehouse, mm-hmm. you know, the definitive artist of the 2000s, was doing the 60s. Yeah. yeah. Adele is kind of doing the 60s. The Arctic Monkeys are not now. I fucking hate talking about Arctic Monkeys because every time I talk about them, some fucking indie press picks up and starts talking about it. <laughs> but I love the Arctic Monkeys and a good example. Their first video was like um, them playing on like a retro version of the old Grey Whistle Test. Mm-hmm. It was already retro. So yeah. like the 20th century is all, is all being retrospective. Yeah. 21st century is all being retrospective. And the 20th century was defined by its sense of newness, Mm -hmm. of its um, kind of infinite newness. And the 21st century is being defined by its finite newness. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's so finite in how new things are because the forms are so established. Yeah. I mean, I figured this, I thought of this though in like 2000 and... Five. That's why the 1975 like weren't a heavy band, right? And didn't do the heavy thing. We were when we first started, but like post reviews refused, post glass draw, post all these things. I was like, no heavy band is going to come and change the world again. Yeah, and they haven't. Yeah, that was I it. was like, if we're a punk band, let's be punk. Mm. let's do something subversive right let's not sound like every other fucking band in manchester well and this is what we had talked before about our problem with this mark fisher thing was he didn't take any hip-hop into account at all this is the argument this is the thing that we spoke and i guess yeah i guess sophie was not as big before when he died but still she was around you know i mean there was tons of stuff happening that went was completely against everything he was saying yeah that's true i think the the mark fisher's short-sightedness is in um just black music kind of juicy three six mafia onwards like he wasn't quite aware of of how new that was yeah and again stuff with aj cook pc music that whole scene um again I I think that Sophie's like one of the geniuses of our time. Yeah, same. Same with Charlie, same with AG, that whole scene. But, and this isn't a critique of them. This is something that I'm sure that they'd be interested to talk about. It's still a retro future concept. Yeah, that's definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if you asked somebody in 19... 19- when the Jetsons was on TV, mm. mm-hmm. what do you think music will sound like in the future? Yeah, PC music. They <laughs> like music that sounds like robots would like yeah. it, right? Mm. It's still a kind of twentieth century idea. That's true. It's weird. Like there isn't. This is the thing because pop culture felt unlimited. Yeah. But maybe it has like a life cycle of like, or what we understand of like pop culture in all its forms. Mm. Yeah. Because everything has a cycle. I don't want to get like a sixth form again, but ca- it, capitalism will have a cycle. Like we had serfdom, slavery, feudalism, socialism. Like ca- they all exist and die. Yeah. Like all things exist and die. And like 20th century pop culture and all of the forms and the constant progression, like it seems like, you know, like when you put a coin in one of those things and it spins, and it goes faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And faster. It's like we're in yeah. this like super hyper thing where like we can see the past and the future yeah. so quickly at the mm. same time. It's like we can't really. And also in the 60s, if you were bored, you had to go like this. Whereas if you're bored now, you do this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like... It's either like your imagination, your imagination, or everything that's ever happened in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Because no one has access to the future. Mm. You can only kind of dream up a future. Yeah. So no wonder people were like, fuck, I need to take some acid and like figure out where to go, right? Yeah. Because now everyone's like, you heard of grunge? I'm like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's like a whole scene of bands in South London that everyone talks about. We just call them Have You Heard Slint? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> you talking. know, it's like yeah. it's like it's it's like. It's funny because, and I feel for these young kids because you see it in like the neologisms that they use. Like they're so desperate to have new ideas, Mm -hmm. but to have new ideas, we kind of need to have new emotions and we don't. Right. So it's like, I saw a really funny tweet that was like, somebody had said, can we normalize not sitting in someone else's toxic energy? and leaving to manifest your own well-being. And somebody older than them tweeted underneath, do you mean don't hang out with someone you don't like? (laughs) (laughs) So it's like, there's this desperation to present new ideas, but all that's happening is that we're getting all these new neologisms. We're getting these new ways of presenting quite traditional ideas yeah. and it's happening in like music and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's all like, gr- it's all like, it's kind of well, like retro. Yeah. Well, was, you, what you were saying about heavy bands. Yeah. Cause like we both were obsessed with the same bands. That's both what like first lit our fires. Like I was obsessed with at the drive in glass draw refused. And I used to always say like, there will never be another live experience like at the drive in. Like, like nothing could ever, like a band could never do this again. But then recently I went to the Drain Gang show and all these kids were, and it was like, obviously that's not any, it doesn't sound, and it has anything in common with that music sonically, but it, the, the spirit was there. Yeah. And I realized people before me were probably saying that about like the fucking doors or it's whatever. It's the principal yeah. skin of me where yeah. he goes, where he goes, am I out of touch? And then he goes, no, right. nah, it's the kids. That yeah. Are <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was just like, no, I'm, 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 you know, we're like personally nostalgic for that music, but, 100%. but that energy, like it just cycles and it, it doesn't take the form of the what same. what we're talking about sound. is that it was, there was, it was fucking everywhere. Yeah. When yeah. we were younger, like I was at like four shows a week. Yeah, yeah exactly. Me felt, too. That yeah. felt kind of dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Like now it's like you go for it's not the same, but like yeah, sure there's those those kind of like energies happening and I don't fucking know. I'm not like at a drain gang show. <laughs> like look at me, I'm not at a drain. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I felt very old, but I, I, I but wasn't there either. It felt it felt dangerous. I was like this is what, that was how I got into them. Well, what I got brought the to the show. shows like um pop in or like, Yeah. Pop yeah, in. they're yeah. like fun. That feels like a real thing. They're buoyant. Yeah. I mean, the New York music scene feels really good now. I will say it's yeah. like I, I'm quite. No, I felt optimistic that at the, I felt that at the Gex show because uh, I would like. Well, Gex is a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was inspiring to see. I'm yeah. Like, all right, the kids are all right. Yeah. This is the thing. I always feel like that as well because, like, I do feel like that. You know, young people will always. Like, I know we're talking about like there's this built-in idea that young people are always at the forefront of culture and maybe neoliberalism and the co- economy that we're in what doesn't allow for that but like kids don't give a fuck about that they're kind of going to do what they're, yeah. They're, yeah. they'll yeah. figure it out right yeah. Yeah. we figured it out well we nearly did yeah. but like they, they'll they figure it out I think like because we're not going to mm-hmm. you well, know yeah well kids are kids and like the teen spirit doesn't die that's like a biological thing that happens that's like an experiential human thing that you go through like that angst that excitement that level of like ecstatic like you know electric energy is just something that happens and then you just become old and right wing like we're talking about before. like like all of us yeah <laughs> <laughs> three of us okay, not a post-vogue right wing we're in our None 30s right wing we've just like, we were just talking about the idea that like when you're fucking 18 you're like hey give me your money and then <laughs> everyone's like no you like you fucking capitalist pig, and then you make a bunch of money, <laughs> and you're like 32. Some 18 year olds like, give me some of your money. You're like, fuck you, <laughs> <laughs> fucking dumb kid. Let's give my money. <laughs> I'm not giving you money. It's a perfect way to boil it down. <laughs> so um, no, I'm not. It's annoying being left wing and then like making money. I know. <laughs> tell, tell, tell me about it. Well, because we, it's a real conflict. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real conflict. Like, actually, I'm like, oh, i got to give the money away. <laughs> Fuck. No, I've been buddying up with my tax guy. I'm like, yeah, tell me about how taxes are good. Like, <laughs> explain it to me, because I, 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 I believe that they are. Just, <laughs> I believe that, but just, I think it'd be good to be reminded. Give me a pep talk, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Fuck, I was going to say something else. I'm not getting into my, like, um... Didn't Bowie go through a kind of pseudo, like, right-wingy kind of phase? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he was, like, fash arc. phase. Yeah. Yeah. fashy phase. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of cool. It, all of that's underrated. People really... People under... Like, Susie and the Banshees were, like, wearing swastikas. Literally. Like, you can just Google it. It just was there. It was it was weird. Is it that thing where it, like people are like oh, but it's actually Hindu, and it's like yeah, but I, I actually don't know the full story with them, but it was kind of like no, it was just kind of like it was like, it, it was like camp. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this is what we're talking about, Jamel. Okay, that's a good point. So, transgr- being transgressive, right? Mm-hmm. There's these levels of transgressivism that like I think that that's fine, like wearing a swastika or whatever, <laughs> fucking whatever. But that's like base level transgression, right? Exactly. And that's art that kind of is designed to be censored. And the censorship is, again, this is Tramel. The censorship is the reward and the punishment. Yeah. 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 And it's all it's doing is reestablishing the dynamic of order. Yeah, there is someone who can censor, and they will. So I will do something. So they do to yeah. remind. Whereas, like what Andy Kaufman did was like take that level of transcendence to like believability. Mm-hmm. Being Gigi Allen, like covering yourself in shit, it's like it's like yeah, okay, it's insane. <laughs> like, but it's but it's base level transgressive. Yeah. What do you, do you know think? I mean? What do you think of Gigi Allen? What do I think of Gigi Allen? I, I'm very curious because <laughs> everyone, like everyone I know, still thinks he's sick. I would never, I, I could, I can't stand it. I don't. I mean, it's like I get it, but get, but dude, this is person versus art. Yeah. Like, I think people like to live vicariously through other people. Definitely. So people like the idea that like Gigi Allen is being that part of us that we never got to kind of truly yeah, express. Yeah, yeah. Right. But he's kind of also just like a fucking maniac. Do you yeah. Know what I mean, that's like, kind of what, that's why I was never interested in him. I just think that like, Poo's yucky. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bathroom shit. Come on, like, come on, man. I, yeah, exactly. Come on, poo on me. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I, I think know. about it. I know. It's cooler shit than poo. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. Let's, let's, That's let's not stick sexy. Because with... I like my punk to be a bit sexy. Yeah, yeah, of course. And when you start pooing on each other, that's not cool. Well, that's why you guys like refuse. But then again, now Ruben... that's fucking. Now look how we're dressed. Yeah. yeah the, it, that... Actually. Straight up. You can't Sexy see yes punk. right now, but he's in the full Catholic schoolboy. Like, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's fully ready to go. When I saw him hanging upside down mm-hmm. in that one shot, which I do in the People video, yeah. changed my fucking life. Same. I got an MTV2 D- free... That's, yeah. The, D, the, the VHS... Well, oh, no, v- I saw it on MTV2. Okay, I got a v- MTV2 VHS, and it had Days of the Phoenix by AFI on it. It had, like... It had... Um, I think it had Used for Glue, Rival Schools... One of my all-time favorites. Beyond... Oh, I've got something to show you. I've got a Polaroid camera, a refused Polaroid camera. Well... Um, no, a, a rival school's polar comment. No, but that shit fucking changed my life because that was like that uniform, mm-hmm. weird kind of like yeah. kind of fascist, fashy, but obviously not. Like that's why I love Refuse. That like there's some bands that are so legit they couldn't even stay together because they were so political. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fucking cool. Yeah. When you watch that documentary. And it's that like, you can find it on YouTube. It's on Swedish, but there's that last scene where they play their last show and then know they're breaking up. And they end with Rather Be Dead and the cops storm the show mm-hmm. and they shut it down. And the whole audience who are like almost in tears are just screaming at the cops. I'd rather be alive. I'd rather be alive and stopping them from getting to the stage by screaming. I'd rather be alive. I mean, it makes me fucking emotional now. Yeah. Thinking it's about it. so, like, yeah, it's so like, sick. like that is what ch- changed me. And that's what I'm, that's what kind of pushed me to do what I want to do. Yeah. I just realized that that had been done perfectly. Yeah, totally. So I just couldn't copy. It's the Manchester thing. You had all these bands that completely changed everything. Mm -hmm. And then post Oasis, everyone was like, where's the next Oasis? It's like, well, there's not good. The The next next Oasis doesn't sound like Oasis. It doesn't sound like Oasis. I'm not saying that's us, but like, you know, it's like we had to do something different because that's Mm -hmm. what like Manchester is, you know? That's why I'm interested in New York because like Mm -hmm. it's going to happen again 
pretty soon. I mean, I know it's been happening in like certain ways. No, it's New York feels really good right now. It really does. I have to say, it always gives you something new. It's, it's a roller coaster. Yeah, that that's just like I, that was. I mean, I'm sure I could think of earlier examples because I was obviously very obsessed with music at the time. But yeah, I would go to my grandma's house after school because she lived down the street to wait for my parents to come get me. She had MTV too, and I didn't. So I'd go watch MTV too because I was obsessed with new metal. I was just like listening to Limp Bizkit, and it was all like new metal shit. And it was all you know, it was like. Mud vein and like Slipknot and, Mushy, and masks and, and it was yeah. being like scary and that that music is sick. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but um, it was like obje- it was like objectively scary. And then Refused came on and it was just like these guys in like this sweater uniform and they like looked so cool. But it was it, it honestly scared me way more. I yeah, was like, yeah, this yeah, is the this is like the craziest thing I've ever seen. Vampiric, and yeah. truly chaotic, and yeah. not contrived. And and it just like even his voice was scarier to me than like these guttural satanic growls really of the other way. Is the it's not really weird, but like what's interesting in like growing up and being so part of like music culture from when you're a kid right? mm-hmm. there's lots of um solo artists now won't name names right there's lots of solo artists now that are referencing pop punk yeah oh yeah all the time right <laughs> and yeah. emo right mm. Now, by the time like my chem put out Black Beret Parade, I think I was like twenty years old. Yeah, exactly. I, I was. Yeah. That was uh, exactly. Yeah, that was not cursive. And, yeah, and, you I, know, people like, would just, like send me memes of that, and I had no idea what it was referencing. Exactly. And I was like, like that was way after my time. I yeah. didn't. That was we. We were gone by that point. Yeah. You know. So, but Billie Eilish and all these kids. That's what that was for these people. Mm-hmm. So you have like these y- some not so young artists. Kind of referencing this. Music, I know you're talking about uh, very overtly, and it's funny because they'll like reference the Sex Pistols, but then they'll reference Good Charlotte. Yeah. And then they'll reference Avril Lavigne, and it's it's interesting because it's almost like they're not aware that this alternative expression that they're expressing as their alternative influence was a hyper commercialized yeah yeah version of what alternative country, culture had become mm-hmm. like by that point that was pop music mm-hmm. um so like this new like alternative trappings of what alternative is it's kind of weird it's all pink also which is strange yeah <laughs> i don't know what is that why is it pink yeah, i know why is it pink but um it's very LA. That's a very LA. It is, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, that's what it is. And LA art is LA art, unless you're like from LA and Jaded and Phoebe and yeah. someone like that who like literally, or Joan Didion. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> but then there's like LA. <laughs> Fucking hell. I don't know if I can do LA, man. We're glad you're in New York. <laughs> but it's like, where do you live? Because it's a bit like everyone's like, oh, but I want to live here because it's like not close. It's like, what do you want to be close to? The Beverly Center? Yeah. <laughs> but there isn't fucking anything there. There's, uh, yeah, it's there's roads <laughs> and people's houses. Yeah. And like one bit called Silver Lake where you can walk. But the rest is a car. And yeah. Just fucking like pink dogs. And like <laughs> there's no, the news isn't on anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You go into the bank in like London, New York, just, we have the news on, like yeah. shit like that. In LA, they don't have the news on. I don't know why I'm shitting on LA. <laughs> it's just, um, because it makes me fucking mental. I'm from Manchester. I don't like waking up on the 5th of November and the weather being like, hi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Fuck off. Yeah. I'll, it, it's also just like, the, I mean, obviously saying LA is isolated. It's what everyone says, of course. But I do see in in music in LA, I feel like, Everyone, it's the the same kind of group in group of producers and songwriters just kind of influencing each other. There's not really like a cultural uh, center. But that's always happened. Is like Laurel Canyon yeah. and shit yeah. like that. At the moment, it's the Dijon, Phoebe Bridges, uh, Christian Lee Hudson kind mm-hmm. of like group. Um, I think that LA is weird because it's so isolated. The thing is with LA, right, is that. You go to meetings and you meet with people and you make plans. Whereas 
we were in a bar. We like got half cut. We went and got some dinner. We came here. What time? It's late now, but we're doing the pod late. We're going to go outside. We bumped into your friend before. Yeah. We'll walk down to like the bar and we'll meet people. And there's a collaborative kind of yeah, exactly. energy. That, in, exactly. In LA, you drive somewhere. So you go to the place, no boo in fucking Malibu. Mm-hmm. And then you see someone that you know and you go over and you go, hey, how are you doing? How are you going to go? And then you go, we should meet and you go yeah let's do it like in a because yeah. obviously i'm in my car and you're like the, you don't go let's come with oh sorry you go like <laughs> come with me yeah like, you, the, the, there isn't this collaborative kind of exactly. thing. exactly that's yeah. the best part of nerk you just like bop around exactly you absorb other people you go somewhere else yeah it's my you said it was fluid which it's was fluid yeah, and yeah, it has yeah, like yeah. this flaneur about it which is a, a, a pretentious word but still it does it's like you can walk around and be inspired whereas LA, there isn't a pavement and he died like trying to get some cigs yeah i always go to that stretch walk. in silver like just to feel like i'm in new york exactly. or go to downtown this i'm like this up. is i can do this i try shit. to like yeah. cross the street and i'm like running for my life yeah. it's insane it, 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 it's <laughs> like it it's also sean Ryder has that great quote which is it it's 60 suburbs like in search of a city like there's no city yeah. And Jeremy, who lives in Midtown, who's like my friend from years, who's the first. So the first label we ever signed to was oh, Vagrant. I meant that yeah, yeah. We signed to Vagrant Records as like kind of like an emo band, really. It's the first label that wanted to sign us. But Jeremy moved to L.A. from New York and he's back now. And he described living in L.A. as like waking up to the most beautiful woman you've ever met in your world in your life every morning that you have nothing in common yeah with, yeah right you know? yeah so yeah. And it's true a, it's a bit like that it's like yeah. so beautiful but i just don't get i can't yeah like, yeah it just doesn't work yeah you know? it's like um i like working out there because people get shit fucking done yeah yeah that's true it's really really good and it's not so like unionized and intense and like london like trying to get people to work past one o'clock is a fucking nightmare yeah so, um, but yeah, no, I, I don't think I could live in LA because it's too, you get too lonely, I think. You got to come here. Yeah, New York looks good on you. Yeah, I think New York does does feel good on me. The weather's brutal. It's You fluid. love a season in New York. Love a season, yeah. You get like a proper spring, a brutal winter. A brutal summer. A brutal summer. But that's also sick. Well, I was here with you guys in the winter and I completely underestimated and walked yeah. home from the bar and nearly died. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, not too um, bad out tonight. It was sick. Yeah. But Wait, it, speaking well, of last time you were here, yeah. before I forget, what happened to that song I played organ on? Oh, so that nearly became the extra track for a Japanese release, but I'm working on this. Me and Jack started working on this like solo project of mine. Me and George are kind of trying to empower each other at the moment. I think because there's a certain element of like codependent, not like codependency, but like we've been together for 20 years. Yeah. It's yeah. a long time, you know, and like everything we've ever done has been the 1975. And, and George, you know, I suppose as we've gotten older over the past couple of years, like we've made different place friends in different places and we have like different creative relationships. And we've always spoken about like making our own kind of solo projects that are under the umbrella of the 75. Yeah. But I think honestly, we've both been scared of that. Mm-hmm. Me being scared of George going off and doing his thing and me being scared of me going off and doing my thing. And I think that our fans have almost been saying like, before we come back and do like another studio record, which has to be fucking mental after this one, really yeah. in yeah. its own way. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We need to kind of do that. So that that was a really deep, weird song. Were you like droning out yeah, the yeah, style yeah. on the on the organ? Yeah, I loved. I I've still got that song. What was it? How did it go again? I don't remember. I can't remember. We only it did one good. take. It was good. It was kind of gothy and cool. Yeah, we were at Electric you, Lady. Yeah, right? you were going to do the Ebo shit. Yeah, we went yeah, to the yeah, Ebo yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. That's that's gonna. So I'm in February. I'm gonna I'm gonna be here for a little bit. I'm gonna be in LA for a little bit. What starting on a a solo record. Everyone's thinking that I'm being a bit like prolific, but I finished this record in February. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's November. Like what am I supposed to do? Like pick my ass? Is that, what? Is that what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've had a lot to do, like, you know, yeah, like yeah, we yeah. we we've been making a bunch of shit, but like but once the show's up and running, then I I I just want to make another record. Um Cause it's, cause that's like what I 
do. I think that like, I don't know, like, because we talk about art and like why we do it and like what's the point and then like gallo archiving shit and putting shit away and putting it away and like we don't make 75 records. Like music accumulates and then we make records out of that music. So mm -hmm. like we're always going to make music. I think like this idea that like that becomes saying, hey, I'm a fixture now. I'm always going to be around kind of like makes yeah. you boring and like yeah, unsexy. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But that's not the case. Like I'm, I didn't get a job. I didn't want to get a job so I could make music. And now I make money from making music. So all that does is give me free time to make more music. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> all I was ever doing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So and also Gallo said this too. You know, big shouts to Gallo. Big, big shouts. shouts. Yeah. The big biggest, we're shouts. essentially the Gallo podcast. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> Don't be racist to people, but shouts to Gallo. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, he said something along the lines of, you know, if you have a plan, you've already fucked it up. So, in, in the sense of that you're saying, where it's like, oh, you oh. shouldn't be thinking about like how being unsexy the way exactly. It, plotting if out some kind of exactly. I always use that it's David like, Lynch quote is that how do you direct movies I read the script first thing I think about I write it down then I go film it yeah. I don't over intellectualize it if every good idea I had I was like that's a good idea and then went wait why yeah. I would never do you're a fucking then. good. Yeah, yeah, you're fucked. Like, and yeah. it's your instinct. Like, trust your instinct. Your art yeah. is your instinct. Gallo's art is his instinct. Lynch's art is his instinct. It's not something that they should even maybe describe perfectly or be able to describe perfectly because it's exactly. kind of like this ephemeral thing that happens. Yeah. And like, it's um, it's it's all like. I don't know. I love all Gallows and Didians and people who are just there for the story or there mm -hmm. for the art. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's um, it's inspiring. I mean, I've thought about doing that a couple of times. I could do something even if I admitted I was going to do it. Remember when, like, you know, Joaquin Phoenix started doing his weird yeah, shit yeah, where he, like, yeah. grew a beard and went a bit crazy? Mm. That's next. Well, <laughs> the idea of like what is a character is not next. It's just like, yeah, who I the, the lines of who I am are becoming so like kind of constructed. Like it, right? Why not play with that idea? Yeah, I don't know what that means. Like that sounds like pretentious and performative, but I'd like to experiment that for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who I am. Right. Well, I don't know what I can do. It's similar to the ideas and then placing ideas in the context of the people who said it. It's kind of like placing these characters in the context of the artist who's performing them. It's not just, you know, some acting obviously is just acting and has nothing to do with the person. But that's also, maybe that's not even true because an actor is drawing on their experience. Yeah, to, actors to play are the part. weird. Do you know many actors? Yeah. yeah. Actors are fucking weird. They yeah. are. They're really weird. I always get really weird. Male actors are weird. Female actors <laughs> tend to be... Well, the female actors that I know are kind of okay. <laughs> some of the some of the male actors I know are like totally down to earth and cool. Yeah. And some of them are just the most insecure people I've ever met in their life. Yeah, that's. that's but I, I, one of my theories about this is that if you're a male actor, you become known for your characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not for who you are. Yeah. So you'll always see like a, an actor who you think is cool in the thing, and then you'll see a photo of them, and there'll be like a rings guy yeah. or like a scarves guy yeah. or like a fedora guy. <laughs> yeah. you know? Why? <laughs> because there's this like need for self-expression that yeah. comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think oh, there must be an element. Of, like, I've had a couple of drinks now. But fuck it. Like, like, there, <laughs> there must be an element of like cockery going on. Oh, for sure. Uh, because yeah. if there's imagine? some like nerdy, weird guy who like looks like me or whatever, who's like writing who you are, and you're like some big fucking sick movie star, and you go out and being known for like. <laughs> yeah. The creative, yeah. yeah. You must be like, who the fuck am I? You're right. Yeah. So that's why I like making music. Yeah. And another thing we spoke about, which is a good thing to talk about on the pod, is one of the reasons that I appreciate music so much now is that it's that is the choice involved in it. Because we were talking about these hierarchies of art, right? Mm -hmm. And this stemmed from my conversation with I can't remember who it was, but. 
we basically kind of decided that like the first tier, primary tier of of art is architecture, food, and fashion. I don't want it to be, but it is. You always need to be eating. You always need to be sheltered, and you always need to be wearing clothes. They're essential, right? And they're all art forms. Yeah. So they are primary. The secondary art forms are literature, music, painting, like all of the other things, visual kind of arts or whatever it may be, conceptual arts. That doesn't subserviate your music. It, it's just, it just means that every time someone's consuming your art, it's by choice, yeah. which is beautiful. Yeah. No one's running to my music in a storm. Yeah, you know right. I mean? There's no practical means to my yeah, music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is, which is kind of nice. But, um, but it's also made me not um, be... I love clothes. I'm not interested in fashion. Yeah. But I don't demonize fashion. It's very easy to demonize it as superficial and this and that. But um, go outside without any fashion, you get arrested. <laughs> yeah. Go outside without any music, you'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so there's an argument that it's more important sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I don't fucking know. <laughs> um. Well, another cool art form is set design. And so you're playing at Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. And what, what does the set look like? Well, I'll tell you, we, we'll, we'll kind of, we'll do some like... That's where we cut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a sec. No, because it's a good point, because it's funny if you say, where's you cut, there you cut, because there is a meta element to everything that we're doing right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, I'm not that interested in kind of, I, I, I'm just more interested in, like, fucking with these forms a little bit. So, like, mm -hmm. the 1975 Live has become a very well-established form. Yeah. It's like this neon dream world. And, like... I'm interested in set design. We're interested in film. And I wanted to kind of make something that felt more cinem kind of more cinematic. And like, it's difficult to like serve the purpose of an arena show because it's not a movie. If you build a set, the reason a set works at a theater is because you have narrative, mm -hmm. and you have characters, and you have story. So, what I'm trying to do. Can you throw me my sweatshirt? Where is my sweatshirt? Oh, it's here. So what I'm trying to do is something kind of in the middle. It'll still be like a music show, but I suppose the best way to describe it is that like our last show was like a fucking Adam Curtis documentary, like with me shouting in front of it. It was like <laughs> outward. Yeah. yeah, it was very outward, like, and it didn't need a ceiling. Yeah, you could have taken that show and put it on a fucking iceberg, Reading Festival, Madison Square Garden. It was like close account encounters. It like landed. That was it. So when we made this record, that was way more like intimate and inward. Mm -hmm. Like those ideas were presenting were presented to me like outward inward so i started thinking like okay well, what does that mean and like outside inside so i'll take you to what it is which is inside which used to be outside i'll cut it like this and this is set design <laughs> here it is wow. here it is jesus christ dude <laughs> <laughs> this is set design this is the this is what's been keeping me up at night for a long time yeah. because it's not let's go see it let's go see it so yeah and we just did a we just i just played you guys the show and it and it's yeah, not finished and it got insane heat it got insane it heat got, we're going no, for special we film. were just we're waiting you know, for the special film let's stuff. go to, to the cool left detached the stage, demeanor, but okay. I, I think i'm oh no let's go to the, the right of the stage i'm yeah, sorry yeah. i'm sorry um so and you built we can stop i built all this in my bag we can stop here for a second one of the cool things is like fucking the instead of using we've always used video right yeah so that's been our pri like video as the primary light source right. you always get like a silhouette in that way 
it's a, a way of doing like the, the, what they call iMag, like really, really bright. So it's kind of quite a dark show on the iMag, but right. we've done the bright show. Yeah. Like this is way more like we wanted to have it kind of quite like E.T., like Spielberg. It is like, that way. You know? Yeah. I was getting major Spielberg. I didn't want to do like us. Duffer Brothers kind of. No, thing, no. But you, I wanted you've to avoided do, it. I wanted to do like, because it didn't, I didn't, and I didn't want to do nostalgia porn. Yeah. But in the way that the show, the last show was very outward, this had to be inward. So we kind of just built this house. Now it's half like just a white house for the second half and then the front half of the show. Well, I'll, I'll show you when we walk up. Yeah. Yeah. It is like, it's pretty warm. Well, that's because we're using Fresnel lighting. So yeah. when you do the white on white, it feels very, let's say, clinical. Right. And it's cool, but it feels cold, exactly. Like Whereas this feels warm. But that's because we're using a lot. See, a lot of this is all like Fresnel. So we're, we're using the white to like bounce off. Mm -hmm. But for example, this is a hybrid of the... Well, let's sit in here. Yeah, okay. take a we seat. Can, we can see. I'm just going to get them in. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get you looking good. Sit down. Okay. Yeah, Curtis, sit. Or can okay, you not? It's not long enough. We need to. Yeah, Jack, you need to follow around. Yeah, we're. I think we're good up here. Beautiful. We always need a couch to pod. Yeah, yeah. you need a couch pod. <sighs> wow. And then the, you can put that on the floor, Jack, and you're good. Well, you can just watch us. Speaking of the warm, um, I don't know if we want to give all the secrets away, but I'm talking about our mutual references. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? The projections look Sick. great as a, as a light source. You're right. Um, yeah, it's obviously very Gregory Crudson, who mm. we both love. That was kind of the what's the what's like. the the Yola Tango, and then artwork? nothing turned itself inside yeah, out. Yeah, one of the yeah, great yeah. album covers. One of the great album covers. It's that. So what the Spielberg thing I always found was like, in those movies or even in that era of movies. Mm -hmm. Like obviously, I'm not from American suburbia, but like that as a kind of aesthetic was, right. you know, the massive part of my childhood. So, what those movies always had was like, it was always based around family. Yeah. So it was like you know, ET is based around like kids or whatever. Yeah, or like, yeah, yeah. And it felt like there was always like an internal domestic suburbia witness to this kind of otherworldly thing outside right so like the windows that we have yeah. that's yeah. where like the color comes from and that's mm -hmm. where like the we have like car lights we have you know those kind of like exactly it's 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 in between that kind of um that kind of cinema and like you were saying kind of like emo a bit yeah because it's kind of like an emo house it, yeah so the saying it reminds me of the room's too cold early november uh, stay where you are, save today. Big Huge shouts. shouts. In my, in, in so my, in my DMs at the moment, being like, you know, the, the people who hit me up the most are like people from Obscurium bands that we would freak out. Yeah, about. right. Because like they're stoked that, that you, you took it there. Well, <laughs> thank you. you're mean, And you're like remembering them. Mm, I think we honor it in a good way. Like, yeah. Because it's a. F <laughs> you sure do, man. <laughs> no, I was, it was what I was about to say. Emo's a feeling, bro. <laughs> it is. We have to give big shouts to where we are right now. This is what I mean. We're in Pennsylvania right now. Pennsylvania. Right? Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Le tits. At the Le tits. At <laughs> but it's At Le tits. Rock Le tits. Rock Le tits. <laughs> now this Can we say that? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Rock Le tits is going to go down, I think especially amongst us as a very iconic place. Oh, yeah. absolutely. This place is like, how do we explain it to... It's a compound of, like, mock arenas and tour support. Yeah, it's basically the guy who, like, owns... Some billionaire guy who, like, owns, like, the biggest PA company was like, right, I need a place where, like, Beyonce could live yeah. for a week. Yeah, right. His, his version of taste is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> when I checked in, the receptionist had guitar pick earrings. I was like, this is my spot. The, tra the trash can holes are guitar picked. Yeah. Dude, my bathroom door is a flight case. Same. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's, so, that's like my favorite part. It's so sick. Also, the, um, the restaurant. The hard, Hardcock Hotel is what yeah, we've been calling exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. It's somewhere between the restaurant's like called Jack White Diem, and, which my favorite part. and fucking, yeah, <laughs> Hard Rock Cafe, Planet Hollywood. Yeah, the, the restaurant's called Per, per Diems. I mean, <laughs> fucking so sick. so sick. 
Um, it's in our home state, which feels feels like a return, even though we never this knew this your, place this existed. This is your home state? Yeah, yeah we're from Pennsylvania. We're from suburban Pennsylvania. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. Like less than an hour from here, You're probably. bringing us to a place in our state that we've never yeah. even heard of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you from? Uh, Like west of Philly suburbs. Because you guys all went to high school together, right? We did. I, I grew up down I, like in Philly and then moved out to the suburbs, and Curtis and I are both kind of suburbs yeah. kids. Oh, well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. That's why we're so bad at it. So the Yola Tango <laughs> references yeah. really hit home for us. For sure. So you, when did you move to New York? Um, 2009. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so it's been a minute. We talk, do, Have we spoken about girls before? How good, how well that delineated that time in New York? The show? The show. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. of course. I mean, we talked about it all. Just because we, we were talking to Jack before. And then yeah, Jack yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. That, but like, um, that just made me think, like that time in New York... Was a real, yeah, interesting time. And the for the like art and stuff. The I think it's first season when they go to the warehouse party in oh my gosh, Bushwick. Yeah. Just as we were around for that, that is the most accurate portrayal the of how it's so accurate. Is yeah, and the one where the, the 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 party where like, who's like the really basic girl, Marnie. Marnie? Yeah, Marnie. Yeah. She like him. Um, so hot. So hot. <laughs> in a kind of. In the most annoying yeah, way. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um. <laughs> my galaxy brain take is that they're all really hot i mean I, they're all I hot in their that. own way yeah i mean but yeah no the and the, you know the the episode where she like sings and it's really embarrassing yes that yeah. kind of party yeah yeah that yeah. was such a that was such a time she's doing like a twee cover oh, of harder yeah, better like, faster stronger oh but like God. kanye is stronger it's yeah. so fucking it's so, it's so of its time if I was Kanye, by the way, I wouldn't have said any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just wouldn't have said it. Yeah, exactly. I, well, I don't know I about all say that. that. Big shouts to Jews. Big shouts yeah, to we're the giving Jewish big shouts to community. Jews. Yeah, the Jewish media. Sh- deafening <laughs> shouts. Yeah, the media specifically. <laughs> big shouts to the media. <laughs> so, is there anything else you want to tell us about this set design? It's well, very it's distinct like, and it's it's kind of what's interesting about this is that. What I wanted to build was something that was a bit more malleable than our last show. Now, this gets into a bit of a technical conversation. But, for example, when you're like, our last show was like a fuck, like an Adam Curtis documentary. Like I say, it was just like lots of information. Mm-hmm. And basically, when you do that with music, you have to do this thing called time coding. Yeah. So, like, all of the music is, like, linked up to yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah. So, if you want to, like, add a song you essentially have to like create this whole computer program and all that kind of shit. And I was like, listen, I want the the set to be more like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. to feel more like a band playing. Right, right, right. So it is, it's pretty much like all live now. There's no track. Yeah. And that's why it's, it's not as like in your face as a show, but I have to like trust that we're good enough as a band to like do that. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it almost feels like I've done the whole like, I could do nothing and have that last show. Yeah, that's true. You know, right. Yeah. I could like do yeah. nothing and just like let it be. Yeah, it didn't sound like there was a lot of track in this one. There's there's yeah. pretty much none like we cuz we just felt like well back in the day you didn't have track, right? Right. So you couldn't just like play the stems of your album down yeah. the PA. So we just thought like let's not do that. That's why we got like more musicians and um but I just wanted it to feel like I'm always more like I, we love shows, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm always more like moved uh, at theater. Yeah. And obviously you don't want to be pretentious and like try and make like a, a a fucking gig what it is really like a piece of theater. But like you want to take it to that place where it borderlines kind of like being like a real moment where you're in the room and something that's quite conceptual right? yeah yeah you know like it, and so that's why it's split split in two halves the first half is like we kind of don't even address the audiences there yeah. right and that's when it's like just about the house yeah and then the second half which has the bit in the middle that you guys saw mm-hmm. ends up with like i think this sofa stays but like all of the warmth right so like what i was going to say before this in the first half we're going to have like tongue and groove mm-hmm. do you know what i mean like yeah. that like that kind of yeah, yeah you know yeah, that yeah. like wood paneling yeah, yeah. so that's going to be wood paneled that would that portal would will be wood paneled the bounce back of white that you get from this at the moment is like really extreme yeah so when you take that off for the second half it's almost like as big enough of a re- reveal when everything just goes white 
and then we come yeah. out in all black and we yeah. just do like greatest hits yeah, and it's yeah. like yeah. we're a fucking rock band and then I can be very forward with the audience yeah no, I, I love this yeah did we we said early November didn't mention saves the day that's what it's reminding me yeah, of too. at your funeral at your funeral mm-hmm. but also like the house is an emo yeah thing you know brand brand new uh yep, hotel um american I mean, football american football like oh, of course just take yeah. a photo of a the house, house. Yeah. Like, <laughs> set up of house american pictures. football why didn't we start yeah. with american yeah football? yeah well, <laughs> but <laughs> also it's reminding me like all these grill cloths and like the warm shit remind what's that replacements video where they just kick the speaker at the end oh god yeah. um is that bastards of young yeah it might be bastards yeah. of young yeah yeah okay uh, yeah maybe the replacement well the replacements have been u- like there's, they use a re- replacement song in like Adventureland, right? Mm-hmm. That this has an Adventureland feel yeah, to it. it. Yeah, definitely. That's a good movie, actually. It, it kind of is. Yeah. N- and now I look back on it. Yeah. At the time, I think I was like, oh, it has a great line in it, where he says like her, someone's ass is like the platonic ideal. <laughs> <laughs> is that the line? Something yeah, like it's that. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No. That. That. Yeah. It, so it's like this kind of. Um, I just, what I didn't want to do was anything like Stranger Things, anything like fucking um, just nostalgia porn. Yeah, yeah. Right. I well, didn't want like a mega drive. Yeah. You it, know? it actually doesn't feel that sci fi despite all the, the TV stuff and everything. Yeah, yeah, struck yeah. a great balance here. Well, because the thing you're talking about, like the outside world versus inside world, yeah. I think another part of all of these kind of references are is just this kind of like. This is this is a Lynchian thing. Yeah. But th- this, w- you're inside a home, something that's warm and comfortable, and on the surface, about family and comfort and safety. To but there's on- this weird kind of angst, like under the surface internal world thing that's happening. Mm-hmm. That which is which is totally the vibe I get from this kind of red pill blue pill thing. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, for the audience as well. There's a whole kind of narrative of me becoming, I'd say, black pill. Black pill. Yeah, I'd say I become black pill throughout the show because I don't have a political identity that I'm willing to establish. Um, it feels white pill to me though. <laughs> <laughs> Look, well, it's white pill by the end, which it I guess is. we'll see next. Yeah, yeah. It's like, but to go with your point, it's a bit like when. Um, well, when Hitchens went to fucking North Korea and he said, I'm not going to reference George Orwell. Yeah. I was like, when I make this show, I'm not going to reference David Lynch. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first thing that I've done yeah. is, is fucking reference, reference David, David Lynch. Lynch. Because the truth is I'm doing all this emo, blah, 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 blah. So all those it's David Lynch. Yeah, yeah, of course. But that's like not mentioning American football first. It's somehow we're missing the obvious one. Exactly. But, <laughs> so but it's very, it's that there's a discomfort in the, in this show and there's a discomfort in suburbia and mm-hmm. there's a lot of shit that goes on behind those closed doors and family dynamics are weird and people are weird and what happens inside is very different to what happens outside. Right. I think like Lynch like really explores the kind of like oddness of that. And then, um, yeah, I think that like there is this, it's kind of like my house. So so to to continue as well like I also don't know because the show will start mm-hmm. then some cool shit will happen. Mm-hmm. Some shit won't work. One time I'll like hit a mark and then I'll be like right well we need to do this. There's a staircase up there that at the moment is just a staircase to nowhere but eventually we're going to have oh uh, well I w- yeah I'll say it okay. Dude, this won't come out. The show will have happened already. Yeah, the American well, show the will tour, be, but, but the UK show. What I'm trying oh, okay. to, what, what I want to do is basic. Yeah, that's not going to be a staircase to nowhere. Mm. That needs to be a staircase to somewhere. But at the moment, a staircase it's just a nice to place. somewhere. Yeah, staircase to somewhere. It's a beautiful it's my, phrase. It's my second. It's my solo record. <laughs> is it? Yeah, <laughs> staircase to fucking somewhere. <laughs> no, my solo. Do you know what my solo record's called? Do you have a name already? Yeah. What is Ladies it? Boy. Nice. I thought that was quite good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good book from back in the day called Ladies Man. Well, this is what I was talking about. It's a good 70s Because I'm not, I'm not, there's also Death of a Ladies Man. Yeah. Because um, I'm not fully grown. Yeah. But I'm, I'm slinking. Mm-hmm. You're definitely slinking. I'm slinking right now. Can we now. talk about your dance moves a little bit? I've been nothing but slinky to you guys. <laughs> 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 Wait, I, I want to talk about my dance moves. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Just in- inspo. I was just, I was, I was digging the... It's James Brown, man. It is, yeah, isn't it? it is. It's just James Brown. Yeah. I think James Brown is the most goated guy of all time. Like, 
we could get into James Brown, that George mm. could fucking get into James Brown because then we start talking about, yeah, talking about James, talking about the vamp. James Brown. About, James Brown. The God. Yeah, you see, <laughs> there you go, the vamp. So, you know, get I up, y- get on up. You have a distinctive, da- I, I do, I think it's a Helian style, honestly. Helian style. Yeah. You know what it is? It's this, like, dyslexic funk thing. It's like mm-hmm. an acknowledgement of how white I am. Yeah. whilst I'm kind of like getting into it yeah. so I think that I'm because I've always been into like white music that's inspired by black music mm-hmm. that's done by white people yeah. really white like yeah. talking heads gang of four yeah totally like shit that's like dyslexically funky yeah so I think that I move in between like I wanted to be a dancer when I was younger really? well, well before like culture hit me and I was like yeah. seven or eight mm-hmm. like that was what I did and that's what I enjoyed and, and I kind of wanted to be a dancer and um, and I didn't but but so yeah like I like I, I, I think it's fun to like funk around yeah but you it's it's more uh, fluid than a David Byrne thing yeah but he's actually autistic right so <laughs> I think that comes well, from I mean, like again, being he autistic is. Right? he is refused autistic, is the, oh for he, sure 100% you know yeah, yeah. Yeah. sorry is that no I no, think no, no, no. no I think Probably he is right, he yeah. is. if he's the, not the, I'm really the story sorry Brian yeah. told? Oh, do you know? Do you know that? Tell that story. The, the, Tell me. Yeah, it's he the was like story in the world. The Eno and Burn were walking through oh, yes, the village, yes. I guess, and got mugged by a group of like ten people or something. <laughs> and Eno was like, it "Was really scary." I actually thought I was going to die. It was actually really scary. And I saw Burn just being dragged into the bushes, and he was just going, "Uh oh." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's a genuine eccentric. Yeah, he so was, he like, just oh. screamed, "Uh oh!" Yeah, I can hear it perfectly too. Uh oh, it's Uh-oh. so good. It's taken around the corner. <laughs> I mean, um, but I mean, also refused is that again? Oh, yeah. It's clearly his moves. Yeah, I yeah. Well, what's he called? J- J- Dennis, uh, Dennis J- like Lig- 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 and so, some well, Swedish some shit. Dumb Swedish yeah. shit. Yeah, but also kind of Ian Savoni. So many Swedes on this show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, Tobias. Like, if we're gonna do shouts, yeah, we're gonna hey, get Tobias. Big shouts. Big shouts, big big shouts, shouts. bro. <laughs> You're the goat. Come up here. <laughs> Come up here, just for one minute. It's worth it. So, like, Tobias, about when I was, like, 25, mm-hmm. yeah, I was obsessed with Nine Inch Nails. And I wanted to do something. They had this one song. They, they have a song called The Great Destroyer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. okay. So, they were just, like, all backlit in static, like, all on synthesizers. Yeah. And I was like, that's the fucking coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I was, yeah. like, on MDMA, fucking Arcade Fire, well, like, headlining Reading or something. And I met, so then I met this guy, Tobias, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, before he comes in, Tobias. Here he comes. This outfit. Yeah, I was, I was checking it out. For, <laughs> for 10 years. It's a fucking <laughs> bossed up outfit. Here, take a mic. There's something Trent said about. This is my best friend and long, longest running collaborator, Tobias Roylander. Who's making it all happen. Makes it all, all <laughs> fucking happen. So, Tobias, I met, and I believed in, when? I was 25, and we met in some juice bar in Los Angeles, yep. and you were dressed like that, yep. and then the next day, I met you again, and you were dressed <laughs> like that, yeah. and then for the next 10 years, every <laughs> single day, I've seen you wear a black waistcoat, yeah. a black shirt, yeah. a pair of black jeans, yeah. your, your boots until they break. Yeah. These are new for you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and this jacket, your captain's jacket that's now that's going to have to get oh, fixed soon. Yeah. So that's what I like on my team. Yeah. People who don't even want to make choices of how yeah. they dress. Yeah. They I mean, just want to That's the classic yeah. uh that's the Steve Jobs shit. I was just trying to explain you have enough choices to make. Yeah. You have enough choices to make. Yeah. I was just trying to explain well, I wasn't trying to explain. I was kind of like talking about my perspective of the show. And one of the things that I haven't spoken about is how I think that this is the first time that we've... Cha- this is the time that we've challenged each other the most because Absolutely. every album, musically, has been very a very obvious, different direction. Yeah. Whereas our show has always been me and you distilling what was great about the previous show making it bigger and better and we were always in this kind of video as primary light source world yeah and i think that we realized that we would got to a place now where bro we got a fucking sword like yeah 
we won the sword. Like we, we won the sword. We won the sword. There's this whole. Th we won the world. There's this thing called the the Knights of Illumination. And it goes back like 500 years or something. Or like I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> it goes back a long time. It's from like people who used to like light churches and shit like right, that. And right, right. the best lighting team of whatever year, they when you win this award, you get like a sword. So we got the no, sword. Got the sword. No, got the sword. for sure. So it's kind of like we wanted to do something different. And I think that you had an idea for a show that was yeah, like I this white, this white clinical thing. And I had an idea for a show, and then we kind of met in the middle. I mean, it, I've never seen anything like this. I really haven't. No, it's really unique. Yeah, I guess, like, um, from the start, we've always used the frame, haven't we? Yeah. And I've always felt like that frame that you have made your own has always kind of been the, the ultimate frame for the art that you make. Mm -hmm. And that's how we've built the shows as well. But... And it went from the, the, the frames behind you with mm -hmm. the aerial projections, volumetric projections, um, where we also used the black and white concept, I guess. Um, and they became the columns, or the space between the frames became the columns. And for the next tour, the space between the columns became the boxes, mm -hmm. or the cubes, but we still had the frame on stage. I guess it it's the first one we don't... Well, we have the door frame. We have the door frame. That's the only thing we've yeah. used that's a kind of piece of 1975 iconography. But we've just had to rely on, like, performance more. A lot, yeah. But this guy, these guys, like... Yeah, I mean... It, they yeah, work. I it, I've never seen anything like sleep. it. They don't sleep. I mean, look, you're a vampire. Anyway. The best <laughs> moment, because you look like a vampire, my favorite you moment ever, <laughs> favorite you moment ever, was uh, we were in a house party. Everyone was, like, super fucked up. Everyone was super fucked up. You were dressed like that. Fucking right. <laughs> Where's the camera? The thing's like over here. The phone is over here. You were sleeping like this. On the sofa like this. <laughs> That's how I sleep. <laughs> Your phone rang. You went. <laughs> I'm coming. Yeah. And you fucking left the room at about 6 a.m. And I was like, that guy is a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> so um, This is no, no nonsense. That's how you got to be. Yeah. The vampiric genius. Vampire genius. Huge shots. That's how we do it. So we have to wrap up in 30 seconds according to who? Josh? Josh? According to everyone. According to... Who's, who, I thought yeah, I was the fucking make, boss. We? Yeah, well, come on. We got a show to make. Well, if you want to hang, you can see us making more of the show. So now we have to design the second half, right? Yep. Which is so a now different. Now we're doing the rock and roll a bit. The rock and roll a bits, yeah. the dirtbag bits. And we should bring it to where the video is about to go, because I think the orange couch might look quite yeah. good. On okay, yeah, the, the orange couch, couch on the so stage. The here. orange couch for MSG the could orange. be an incorporation. Yeah. They they have a couch. Mm -hmm. They have this couch. We I'll show you the couch. Yeah, let's take a look. The zoom is on. Check, Where check, are check. we, Maddie? We're at the garden, baby. <laughs> We're at fucking Madison Square Garden. I know we said when we ended the last segment that there was going to be an orange couch on the stage. Oh, the yeah. The union wouldn't let us bring the orange yeah, couch that's in. not happening. But the, the union won't even let us turn this fucking music off. Yeah. The union won't let us have the after party either. <laughs> I can't believe that you guys <laughs> didn't expect that. <laughs> oh, no, we did. That's it probably just, a good uh, place to start. We didn't realize, or at least I didn't realize, just quite how famous you really are. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No, how I does mean, it feel? Uh, it's really sweet of you to say. <laughs> it's a, it's what every teen teenage boy's dream. I you, feel it. You made it. Well, have it's because we're we're having a TikTok moment right now, which yeah. is why the guest list has gone so crazy. I think. Uh, I think it's just TikTokers. Oh. What song? Right. Um, the one bit of music that doesn't have me in it. So like, there's this <laughs> female vocal on the record. <laughs> Everyone's like, we love that bit, but like, fuck, fuck the rest of it. Um, no, it's. Yeah, so it's, a, it's crazy, man. Second, l last time we played here, we were like cult big, but now we're more like big, like kind of just big, yeah. big, I think. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's it's. And Bird has already there. now gotten out because he did the first couple shows of the tour. How fucking insane the show is. Yeah, it's kind of, um, it's, it, uh, I don't know. What, what, <laughs> you know what we're all in pursuit of, right? We want to make, we want to make special films. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, it's like, it's, it's, I think that we've always 
fuck, tried to fuck with the form of like a rock show because like yeah. bands are boring, right? Yeah. yeah, it's like the whole thing. So like this bands. this is like us, I suppose, taking it to as far as we can in regards to what like a pop show we can do. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So the yeah. first half's quite conceptual. Um, you'll get to see all the fucking like alpha dick touching yeah. meat eating shit yeah. Yeah. tonight, which will be cool. How did the first few shows go? It was good. I mean, those moments kind of went viral out of context. Yeah. yeah. Which was good marketing <laughs> for the show. <laughs> I'm just literally sat there like jacking off. I knew the roof moment would go off Yeah, yeah, the, my, yeah, yeah, I saw the meme of like, he doesn't have one song where he needs to be <laughs> yeah, doing this. Yeah. That's great. That's, <laughs> like, that's like such a goal to get that meme made exactly. of you. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't. Uh, and it's always, they always talk like they're black and it's always white. He ain't got one yeah, yeah. song <laughs> where yeah, he needs to be doing all that. <laughs> no, I ain't got, I actually do have lots of songs i mean my career is pretty much like my obsession with my dick yeah in a kind of in a literal and a arty way right most so this, artists, is, this is just yeah. a natural conclusion yeah, yeah. <laughs> this yeah. show we're all just making memes at the end of the day yeah exactly yeah but we're streaming yeah. this live on like yeah amazon is yeah, that big cool? shouts to Amazon. Yeah, I, th I don't know. Is that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> is that, is like that chill? Is that point? chill? I know they're <laughs> still streaming the Kyrie <laughs> documentary, so yeah. I'm not sure. But <laughs> I don't know. Big shouts to Amazon. Yeah, I guess. big shouts to Amazon. <laughs> I don't, how do you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who I can give big shouts to anymore. Know, it's a tough time. To <laughs> I don't know if that's okay. Like when I just said it, <laughs> but I said okay. Well, like, this has been a really fun journey, Maddie. Thank you for bringing no, us honestly, along. Honestly, guys, like I'm, I'm a. I'm ahead. I'm a packer, and um, it's, it's been really fun. Of a lot more. You have turned mean, our life into a special film. For yeah, the past you, month or so. You yeah. had a good fun. Yeah, it's been really good. I mean, tonight's going to be the fun. tonight is going to be the special film. <laughs> if we cut to tonight, then that's probably oh, that's be the true. <laughs> yeah, Jordan, can you get some footage <laughs> at the party tonight when it gets shut down at like ten fifteen? It can't <laughs> happen. Yeah, I mean, if it's four blocks from here, like literally the whole GA is just going to try yeah. to get there. This will come out a week from now, so we'll this is everyone like, will know yeah. what, what happened. New York, City, New York City's Well, fun a lot of people who come early when the show's still happening because it starts are probably just going to leave. Maybe it'll, I don't know, maybe it'll be okay. They're gonna, people are going to realize there's no chance of getting in, and then it's going to be fine. Yeah, I, I get know. off on the chaos. I really yeah, do. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's just... That, 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 you must, that, too. You're filming Madison Square Garden Let's tonight. do it. Special yeah. film time. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Just make, a li make your life like that, right? An insane heat life. Brought to you by the Iron <laughs> Insane Heat Life. <laughs> Big shouts, Matty Healy. Big shouts, Matty Healy. Thank you. Thank you.